the spot start. Don and Jerry have the call as the homestand begins with the Sox and O's. Tim Wakefield scratched tonight from his scheduled start with a stiff back. So the Red Sox turn to Julian Tavares as they have so many times before. Welcome to Fenway Park for game one of a three game series between the Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox. Hi again everybody I'm Don Orsillo welcome to Red Sox baseball the Red Sox are just suffering a sweeping to the New York Yankees it leaves the Red Sox with a five game lead atop the American League East 28 games left to play for the Red Sox and the good news is the Red Sox have a pretty favorable schedule and a lot of games at home the first of seven tonight with the Orioles 18 of the final 28 games are at home the Red Sox are second best in the American League at 40 and 23 at home the Red Sox play the Orioles Blue Jays and Devil Rays so they have a 23 and 12 record again and have had winning Septembers in six of the last eight seasons. We welcome in Jerry Remy and tonight the announcement that uh, Tim Wakefield has been scratched and these injuries are starting to add up. They sure are Don. They're mounting up uh, not like last year by any means but certainly uh, not helpful at this time of the season especially coming off a three game sweep by the New York Yankees and of course the biggest one as you mentioned Tim Wakefield not pitching in the ball game tonight. I mean he came to the ballpark with a sore back was unusual. I saw him go out earlier this afternoon to play catch. He came back in reported that he could not go tonight so he's going to miss a turn. Manny Ramirez we have no idea how long he's going to be out. It could be a couple of days it could be a couple of weeks that's a very tough muscle the oblique muscle especially when you have to swing a bat Mirabelli will be back in a couple of days because they need a third catcher even though he won't be 100 percent he would be back with the Red Sox and of course Bobby Kelty may or may not be available tonight Zito Brincona was not sure in his pregame meeting with the media so you know these are some pretty serious injuries and when you have a party of starting rotation with Wakefield going tonight uh, that's not good news especially the way he's been pitching so it's going to be Julian Tavares taking his chances tonight against the Orioles. Well, tonight the Red Sox play an Orioles team that's lost nine in a row. We're back with the first pitch from Fenway after this. September 4th. See your Lexus dealer. Someone's about to lose their selling Miller highlight privileges. Can I borrow that for a second? The hamburger, eleven fifty. Are you for real? Excuse Step me. aside, Mona Me. Pardon moi. Excuse us. See, this beer is about helping people live the highlight. It's a good, honest beer at a tasty so price. We have, we have one. Mess with the highlight, and the highlight will mess with you. 11.50 for a hamburger. Y'all must be crazy. <laughs> I've got it. We've got it. We've got it. Got what? Health insurance. Massachusetts residents are now required to have it. And the state's health connector makes it more affordable and easier to get. I've got it. Me too. Call or go to our website to compare plans, get information, and choose the right plan for you. Get preventive care and medical and financial protection. I'm getting it. I've used it. We've got, got it. it. Get health insurance now through the state's health connector. When it comes to repairs, VIP always tells you up front what's wrong, when it'll be fixed, and we'll do it for less. At VIP, we shoot straight, always. We'll never leave you in the dark. Our qualified techs will tell you what your car needs and what it doesn't in plain English. Our full one-year nationwide warranty on parts and labor means we stand behind everything we do. And we'll always let you know exactly when your repairs will be done. When you need service, head to VIP. A little love goes a long way. Captioning provided by Finagle and Bagel, Boston's best sandwich soup, salad, and of course, Bagel Cafe, with 20 locations in Eastern Mass. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Southwest Airlines, New New England Subaru dealers, Foxwoods Resort Casino, Honda, 
Rico. Setco. And by New England Toyota dealers. Yeah, good evening once again everybody welcome back to Fenway Park Red Sox certainly happy to be home again after what seems to be a very long stretch for the Red Sox away from Fenway Park this last uh, three city tour taking the Red Sox course to Tampa Bay Chicago and New York Julian Tavares has wrapped up his warm up tosses and once again Jerry you find yourself uh, asking Julian Tavares to step into a spot start Red Sox have done it quite a bit and tonight they're kind of forced into it with Tim Wakefield unable to pitch tonight you know I had a sense something was going on this afternoon because when Tavares came in the clubhouse he immediately was called uh, over by uh, manager Terry Francona and Tim Wakefield was in full uniform he went to the outfield I guess to play catch to see how his back was not good and Tavares of course now making the start uh, he's on regular rest last time he pitched was Sunday against Chicago and pitched a very good game against the White Sox but you know slowly but surely some of these injuries are starting to crop up the Manny Ramirez thing Bobby Kelty and of course uh, uh, Wakefield today. Uh, not like last year as we mentioned in the open but uh, concerning. Well Tavares as you saw the numbers against Chicago matching up against the Orioles tonight and comfortable conditions from Fenway Park the breeze is blowing in at the moment at Fenway and a kind of cloud covered Fenway Park with the lights on already tonight as the Red Sox welcome the Orioles for the first of three There's a look at the condition 69 degrees. And 61% humidity and partly cloudy. It does not appear that there is any precipitation in the forecast, as uh, that is certainly a good thing. But a tough series for the Red Sox in New York. And, you know, it was interesting in that the Yankees were all banged up heading into that series after being roughed up by the Detroit Tigers. 16 to nothing in the last game of that series in Detroit. Well, you wouldn't know it in the series against the Red Sox. No, and they look like a much, much better team than what we saw earlier in the season from the New York Yankees. I mean, they. They came ready to play. There's no question about that. They got quality starts from Pettit, from Clemens, and of course, so Wong yesterday. Red Sox offensively couldn't do very much against the Yankees, and their bullpen has improved. The Rivera looks like he's throwing like, you know, Mariano Rivera, and of course, Chamberlain, who we saw yesterday, who has, by the way, been suspended for a couple of games. I mean, he's a big addition to the end of that uh, ball game for the Yankees. So uh, they have to contend with. There's no question about that. If they get into the playoffs, then I think they'll make the wild card. Red Sox taking the field tonight as the crowd welcomes them back to Fenway Park and boy are they glad to be home and as the Red Sox take the field let's check out the new Orioles lineup brought to you by Rico as it is Brian Roberts leading it off at second base Corey Patterson in center field Nick Marcakis in right Miguel Tejada at shortstop Kevin Millar at first base Aubrey Huff the designated hitter Melvin Moore at third base Ramon Hernandez does the catching and Jay Payton in left field bats ninth. The starting pitcher is brought to you by Infinity and on the mound tonight for the Red Sox it's Julian Tavares 29th appearance his 22nd start he is seven and nine in the season with the four point eight four ERA last time I was against the White Sox last Sunday he won that game seven to one went six innings giving up only two hits and one run that was the first win as a starter he had since back on June 20th at Atlanta in two starts this year against Baltimore Owen one with an ERA of six point three zero. The Red Sox are fifth in the league in defense with 71 errors in 134 games. Mike Lowell at third base, Julio Lugo the shortstop, Dustin Pedroia at second, and Kevin Euclid at first. Left to right, Eric Hinsky, Coco Crisp, and J.D. Drew, and Kevin Cash getting the start behind the plate, catching Tavares. Up by Cruz, C.B. Buckner has the plate tonight. At first base, it's Joe West, Ed Rapuano at second base, and Ed Hickox is the umpire at third. Where available, this telecast can be heard in Spanish by selecting the SAP button on your television remote. Enjoy the game. Buenas noches, amigos. Well, the Orioles back at Fenway Park, a team that has struggled lately. They have lost nine straight games. Dave Trombley, the manager of the Orioles, who was given an extension at the beginning of this losing streak, and they've now lost nine straight, oddly enough. As uh, he will be the manager here next year as well for the Orioles. 263 average during the streak, just over four runs a game. As after the first pitch of this one is Roberts, it's to Lugo on the Eucharist for out number one. John, you mentioned that Tremblay signing that uh, extension, and it's a good thing he signed it when he did, because uh, <laughs> if they had to do it today, they may reconsider. Certainly not his fault. Uh, but the, the Orioles have had a very, very difficult time, and in particular with their bullpen again. Oh, an option for 2009 as well if things go well in 08 
who was originally named the interim manager on June 18th when they fired Sam Palazzo. And I'm not sure that was Sam's fault either at that point. The way things had gone for the Orioles this season. One down, Corey Patterson's the batter. And the speedy center fielder who takes strike one from Tavares. Madison at 275 to begin the night. Seven homers and 41 runs batted in. Two for four in the game last night against Tampa Bay. They just wrapped up the series with the Devil Rays. They were one and nine in the worst homestand that they have had in club history. A homestand of 10 games. Previously, they'd gone two and ten in a homestand at Memorial Stadium back in 1955. But to the worst homestand, the Camden Yards they've ever had. Down the line at first, Euclid was guarding the line. He'll handle out number two. Well, from a Red Sox point of view, certainly glad to have the, the month of August come to an end. Two brutal 10 day road trips, and of course, the last one finishing with those three games in New York. As you look ahead to the month of September, and you did that in your open element tonight, Don, Red Sox are home quite a bit and pretty easy trips. Trips to Baltimore, Toronto, Tampa Bay, a lot of home games last week of the season at home. That's a good thing for them. Red Sox certainly played very good baseball at home second best record in the American League at home at 40 and 23 coming into tonight's action. Nick Markakis bats with two outs and the bases empty. Good solid season from Markakis uh, 292 average 15 home runs 86 runs batted in he's also stolen 16 bases. There for a strike, and it's two and one to Marquecas. He's 21 RBIs in his last 23 games. That's a foul outside of first, and the count evens at two and two. Nick Marquecas has been in every Orioles game this year. He has started all but three, but managed to get into every game this season. And tonight, the 135th game of the year for the Orioles. Wide in the right field, a base hit over the outstretched glove of Dustin Pedroia. And Nick Markakis with a two out base hit. Well, you'll see here that uh, Kevin Cash, the catcher, wants a sinking fastball away. Instead, it stays inside, and that's a good spot. For a left handed hit, the ball down and in, and Markakis puts it on the line up over the head of the leaping Pedroia for the base hit. So, two down Markakis at first, and it brings up Miguel Tejada. And at 304, 16 homers and 67 runs batted in. A couple of hits last night going two for three against Tampa Bay. And all the Orioles he had uh, one of the best series he was six for 12 in the series mentioned the one in nine homestand he had five homers and seven RBIs during the homestand so it wasn't his fault popped up right side Nicholas backpedaling it'll take him into foul ground makes the grab that ends the inning they strand Mark Kakis. Red Sox coming up. Here we can see that the structure of price variance is going to shift unilaterally according to daily expenditures and profit margins. And here on slide 88 of 250, we have a contribution. That's why Southwest Airlines has nine daily nonstop flights from Manchester and Providence to Chicago Midway. So you can always catch a later flight. And you can count on us to get you there with our convenient nonstop flights and on-time service. You are now free to move about the country. It may seem like they've gone away, but of course they haven't. Despite the restrictions and regulations, the tobacco industry is still targeting youth with even more sophisticated marketing techniques. In fact, if parents don't notice the advertising, the tobacco industry has done its job, drawing in one more new customer. Their target? Your teenager. 
Tobacco never quits. Learn how to prevent tobacco use. Visit TobaccoNeverQuits.com. chicken be bad. At Wendy's, we serve only the tender center cut in our chicken cordon bleu sandwich with Swiss cheese and black forest ham. Paired with a new twisted frosty, chicken's good again. That's right. The passage is intense. But if you complete the journey, you will find your destiny among the world's greatest warriors. The few, the proud, the marine. Back at Fenway, the Orioles unable to score in the top of the first. Red Sox coming up in the bottom of the first. Starting pitchers brought to you by Infinity and on the mound tonight, the rookie, Radimus Liz. Yeah, we'll take a look at his minor league numbers down at Double A uh, Bowie with the Bay Sox after this first pitch. And big strikeout numbers from at the minor league level 11 and 4, 3.22 ERA, 161 strikeouts, making his second major league start. He lost his first start against Minnesota. This one driven deep and far, but foul by Pedroia. That first start against the Twins, he went six innings, giving up four hits, five earned runs, had five strikeouts. And made 92 pitches. On the scouting report, I saw his fastball is anywhere from 90 to 99. That's a that's quite a range. Guess you never know what you're going to get. Radimus Liz ready with the 1-1. Droya slicing it foul. There's 97, so he's upwards to 99. 97 so far. Yeah, they circle his uh, slider as his best pitch: fastball, curveball, slider, and changeup. So Pedroia's numbers at 315, six homers, 42 runs batted in. Wow. 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 97 and some chin music, two and two. Red Sox are used to that after yesterday. Uh, remember what happened at the end of that Yankee game? And boy, I'll tell you, this is very close to hitting Pedroia right off the head. Two and two to Pedroia. Kevin Euclid waits on deck. He's the guy that went through it yesterday. And a swing and a miss. Only six and up, and he strikes out Pedroia to begin the night. Let's check out the rest of the Red Sox starting nine. We've seen Pedroia. He's at second base. Kevin Euclid's at first base. David Ortiz, an designated hitter. Mike Wall at third base. J.D. Drew in right. Coco Crisp in center with Eric Hensky in left. Julio Lugo at shortstop bats eighth. And Kevin Cash stays in there to do the catching, even though he is not catching Tim Winfield tonight. So one down here in the last half of the first inning, and it brings up Kevin Euclid. And we have learned tonight as Euclid stands in that there has been action taken against Jabba Chamberlain in case you missed it from yesterday's action. And certainly Euclid has not missed it in any way shape or form. Chamberlain has been suspended for two games and find an undisclosed amount for his inappropriate actions during the top of the ninth inning of yesterday's game. Bob Watson vice president of on field operations for Major League Baseball making that announcement. Yeah, Chamberlain will begin the service suspension tonight for the Yankees host Tampa Bay and a look back to yesterday. Now this is one of the strangest things you know I, I don't quite still don't understand it. Uh, they're in control of the ball game. They're getting ready to sweep the Red Sox. Nothing in that game had happened to warrant anything like that. And twice throwing over the head of Kevin Euclid. And but Hernandez doesn't have to warn anybody when you intentionally throw at somebody's head you are immediately thrown out of the game. And of course by being thrown out of the game because of that that's why the suspension. And Terry Francona in his press conference after the game saying the young man was trying to get our attention. He certainly got it. As this one to right field, Nick Markakis in a few steps. And they make the catch for out number two. I thought Joe Torres actually do the defense first. All right, thanks, Don. The Oriole defense is brought to you by a New England four dealers. They are first in the league with 67 errors. Melvin Moore at third base, Miguel Tejada the shortstop, Ryan Roberts at second, and Kevin Millar at first. Left to right, Peyton Patterson and Marquez. Ramon Hernandez doing the catching for Liz. 
Now that we have the defense. I, I found the Joe Torrey's comments also interesting both uh, Terry Francona's and Joe Torrey's but Joe Torrey basically said we would not we're trying to send a message send a 21 year old guy out there to do that we got enough guys who could get it done should we want to so I don't know you know I don't know how you felt about it but I'm not sure whether it was intentional or not at the end of the day well we we played back the signs that Posada was giving now granted you know if it's set up where it's intentionally going to do that they're not going to give signs that say knock the guy down because you can see that on camera but he was given fastballs away fastballs away and you know you think through the series a rod got hit Pedroia got hit it seemed to be done it seemed what what was the point of it I don't get it you know it just didn't make sense of course we don't know what goes on in the field but it just didn't make sense to me at all and it's, it's you know if it was one it slipped if it's two weird. David Ortiz rattles this to deep right field. Back goes Marquez at the wall. Gone. Into the Red Sox bullpen. Boston on top, one to nothing. Big Poppy's gone deep for the 26th time this season. Big Poppy is going to have to come up big without Manny Ramirez sitting behind him, and he turns Liz's fastball around big time. You know, a lot of the home runs that David has been hitting have been on breaking balls. This on an overpowering fastball. And Mike Timlin again making the catch like he normally does in that Red Sox bullpen. He was very good at that. He gets the towel ready to go and makes the grab. So two down Red Sox on top one nothing Mike Lowell back in the four spot and he rips this to left and this will take a wall hop and back to the left fielder Peyton heading to second is Lowell to throw a very good one and in time to get Mike Lowell. It's credit for the single but gunned down at second base by old friend Jay Peyton Red Sox grab a run take a one nothing lead after one. Ultimate driving machine is bound to the highest order of standards. So at BMW Peabody, our only job is to maintain the status quo. And you know something? Nobody does it better than us. BMW Peabody, winner of the 2007 Center of Excellence Award. The wait is over. Olympia Sports' biggest footwear sale of the year is happening right now. Buy one pair of brand name athletic footwear, get a second pair of equal or lesser value for only half price. This sale ends soon, so get it at Olympia Sports today. I play banjo. I play bass. I play trumpet. And I play the lottery. And Maine Lottery players win almost $3 million in prizes a week. That could be music to your ears. When you're in the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing you'll always find at Extra Mart. Extra Mart is proud to be your headquarters for the 147th Annual Woodstock Fair in Woodstock, Connecticut, this Labor Day weekend, August 31st through September 3rd. The Woodstock Fair features over 48 acres of rides and exhibits, great food and top-notch entertainment, including Trick Pony, The Bangles, The Cherry Pop and Daddies, Quiet Riot, Jordan Knight, and Josh Grayson. Save $10 by getting your advanced admission and ride tickets at participating Extra Mart stores. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today. Here's a smart way to handle the other green monster. Sovereign Business Owner Banking. You can get free business checking. Free business online banking. Your first order of checks free. And Sovereign's best personal checking too, all free. Which means nobody in the neighborhood hustles harder to be a small business bank than Sovereign. Nottingham, New Hampshire represent. I kind of like Friar Don. I've done a few Providence College basketball games in my time. Is that, that's a halo over your head? I guess so, yeah. Kind of angelic. Kevin Malai leading it off here in the second inning. Well, with two outs, it's the time to try to get in the scoring position, and Mike Lowell does. A nice big bounce for Jay Payton, a perfect throw to second base, a nice pick by Roberts, and he's there waiting for Mike Lowell. 
With one out to nobody out, you probably don't take that chance. With two outs, you do take it to try to get in the scoring position. It's Millar, Huff, and Mora here in the top of the second inning. Millar starting at first base. Myself looking at that scoreboard more often already. I realize it's not even September yet. Looking at Seattle score? No. Look at the Yankees score. And Tampa Bay has jumped out to a one nothing advantage over the Yankees. Sonnenstein against Hughes. Something tells me that's not going to be the last score in that game. I have a sense that may be a high scoring game tonight. We'll see. Your Rems are out in the up in Toronto tonight, north of the border. And Sliding a little bit. Mariners are fading fast. Right, pick not going well. And we got a lot of games. We still got to fix uh, that Cleveland situation. A couple games against them still on the makeup side of things as Lugo steps onto the infield grass, makes the catch for out number one. Let's check in with Tina Servasio. Don, at about 5.05 this evening is when the word started to spread that Tim Wakefield was scratched from starting tonight. So I caught up with Kevin Cash, who, of course, caught Wakefield's side session this week just to see if Wake was complaining about his back in between his last start. Not really anything that I noticed from anyone's different other than that I was a little bit shorter than usual, but... Uh, you know, hopefully this is just a uh, precautionary step and get him back out there in the next five days. Kevin said that today Tim was complaining about a sore back, but at first said that he could go, that he would be able to pitch. Then about 10 after 5, Terry Francona made his way out during batting practice to tell Kevin Cash that Wakefield was not going to go. Well, he's set back for the Red Sox. Thank you very much, Tina, as Aubrey Huff with a swing and a miss. Yeah, you know, and I don't think uh, too many of the Orioles are too uh, unhappy about it because Wakefield's been pitching lights out over his last few starts and he never looked forward to facing a knuckleball. Pitch a strike in the count one and two. Look at the numbers for Hoffman 269 14 homers and 63 runs batted in. Roll under the glove of Tavares to second base. Pedroia against the grain, but still in time. Nice play by Dustin Pedroia. Once the ball got by Julian Tavares, I thought for sure this was going to be a base hit. Now, Aubrey Huff does not run well, but Pedroia to the back end, the quick release. And that's a hard throw to make. You know, when you're going away from first base, you've got to kind of tail that ball back to the first baseman. He does that, perfect throw, and they get the second out of the inning. You're at that angle as a second baseman. There's a natural tail on your throw, and you've got to try to start it behind the first baseman to the outfield side of the first baseman. Two down for Melvin Mora. He certainly slid down the order here for the Orioles. He now bats seventh in the order. And it starts tonight at 260, 13 home runs, 46 runs batted in. 0 for 4 in last night's game and 2 for 12 in the series. Spending time on the disabled list. The left mid foot sprain. First injured on July 1st, played with it for a while, and then ended up on the DL July 14th. Activated on the off the DL on August the 5th. It's in 22 games for the Orioles. Popped up. Back goes Euclid. Kevin into foul ground. Make the catch it ends the inning. 1 0 Red Sox. Ford's model year clearance ends September 3rd. It's the final days. Just announced, save big with 0% financing or up to 3507 cash back on select SUVs. Now is the best time of the year to get into an expedition. Expedition score. But you'd better hurry. 0% or up to 3507 cash back on select SUVs end September 3rd. Don't miss the final days of Ford's model year clearance. No. No. No.
What? I had a virus. The computer's not the problem, Mr. Tucker. It's your network. With Verizon high-speed internet, you'd have a dedicated line, spyware, and automatic security updates every three hours to keep viruses on. You giving rides? Not today. Step up to Verizon high-speed internet, the speed you need. Constant security upgrades, all on a dedicated line. Verizon, it's the network. Want new tires? Now through September 22nd, stop in your local Dunlop retailer during the Tech Talk Go event. Buy four select Dunlop tires and choose between one of four premium brand music phones or a $50 mail-in rebate. Choose from some of Dunlop's most popular tires, including the entire SP Sport and Grand Trek lines. So cruise into your participating Dunlop retailer today because drivers know how to make the right call. For the best tire deals, come to Sullivan Tire. We're always here to get you there. Good things go fast, real fast. The Polaris Power Play Sales event going on now until September 30th. Now is the time to get model gear and clearance offers. Rebates up to $800 on Polaris ATVs and rebates up to $600 plus 4.99% financing on Ranger Utility vehicles. Check them out now at your local Polaris dealer. Because before you know it, they'll be gone. Polaris, the world's toughest ATVs. Covidian, one of the world's largest providers of medical devices, supplies, imaging products, and pharmaceuticals, is a proud sponsor of the Red Sox on Nesson. J.D. Drew leading it off in the home half of the second inning. It's Drew, Chris, Ben, Hensky to face Radimus Liz. As Drew hits a 257, seven homers, and 46 runs batted in. This is the second Radimus to have pitched for the Baltimore Orioles. The first was Radimus Dykoff, who pitched in just one game and one inning, spending the bulk of his career at Triple A with the uh, Orioles in Rochester. He was from Aruba. And was the second uh, Aruban to have played for the Orioles. Of course, Sidney Ponson was the first. Was he after Ponson? He was after Ponson, yeah. But again, just one game. This is the second Radimus. Oh, Ooh, this one gets CB Buckner. Oh. CB's voice is going to raise just a little bit after this one. I'll tell you what, if I if I was a home plate umpire, I would want to go back to those big balloons that they used to wear. I'd be wearing much more stuff than they currently are. I mean, this is like not. That'd be like a lot of metal stuff. I mean, those foul balls that hit that balloon and they bounce out the shortstop. They didn't look real good. And I'm sure they were heavy to hold. Well, the other problem with them, too, is, you know, these guys have to run around and cover bases. Like, in other words, he might have to make a call at third base, and, you know, he's enough to carry that balloon down there. <laughs> He'll be running around with a lot of junk. But I'd have more than what he's got on right now. There's got to be a lightweight shield. Side full count now to J.D. Drew. Had a tough series against the Yankees. Had a tough time at Yankee Stadium. Period. Spoko Crisp waits on deck. The Red Sox here in the second inning. Drew just two for his last 18. Drew's hurt. Something's wrong with J.D. Drew. He took a swing earlier in this bat where he kind of stumbled out of the box, and you can see this last swing. Same thing. I wonder about that as a season altogether. I mean, the rap on JD Drew coming in is that he won't play hurt. And trying to make a good impression here in Boston. I wonder how much he has played hurt this season. As he sends this out to right, Markakis moves over, makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Well, we're going to have to watch that because uh, let's take a look at the two swings from JD Drew. And it's clearly something uh, that is bothering him after these swings. This is the first one, I guess, maybe it hit him off the foot. But he drops down to a knee. And then he had another swing later in the back, two pitches later, where you see him uh, have an awkward swing again and then almost collapse again after the swing. So something there is bothering him. And the Red Sox, obviously, very short on outfielders. He will now limp his way to the clubhouse. Terry Francona non-specific as to who would get called up in the September 1st call-up said there'd be probably three of them. 
And an announcement will be coming very shortly. Obviously, might be after the game tonight. And you would imagine Jacoby Ellsbury would be part of that exchange, certainly. One look at uh, again that first swing and see if we can see where the foul ball hits him. It looks at right off the top of the foot. Apparently Bobby Kelty's availability was very much up in the air also. You know one option they do have is to put Julio Lugo in the outfield because he has played there in the past. And of course you could put Cora at second base so Kelty we don't know about. Crisp taking on the 3 0 pitch and it's ball four inside. First walk given up by Radimus Liz. Tonight's Chevy Triple Play contestant is Lynn Roy of Woonsocket, Rhode Island. Tonight, if our hometown team turns a triple play, Lynn will win a Chevy HHR. For your chance to win a fuel efficient Chevy car or truck, enter the Chevy Triple Play contest this month at Nesson.com. Coco Crisp aboard on a four pitch walk with one down here in the second. And here's Eric Hinsky, first to check on Crisp. He wants to get back to the bag quickly. 21 steals for Coco, been thrown out five times. Eric starts tonight under 200 and 197, five homers and 16 runs batted in. He's now started nine of the last 19 games, finding himself in the Red Sox lineup more regularly because of all these injuries that have taken place and getting more time. Little streak of wildness and Melvin Mora in to uh, have a few words with his starting pitcher. Missing for ball two, two and zero. Oh. And now the catcher Hernandez out to talk to Liz. Well, he certainly throws hard. That's not a question. Wednesday's all new Sox appeal meets its toughest dater yet. The hot rockin' overnight DJ Robbie Road Steamer is stepping into Sox appeal seat. See if any of these single girls can catch the road steamer's eye Wednesday after our size coverage. Don't miss the encore presentation of this week's episode featuring Kevin, the Holly riding truck driver, this Sunday at 9. There's our boy. I didn't know he was the road steamer, though. Robbie, road steamer. Well, uh, I don't know what we said about him. But I, I hope nothing. I'm, How do we get ourselves into this mess? I don't know. But we, we should do a disclaimer that anything we said we really didn't mean. No, that was all in fun for the show. Yeah. I think I remember Robbie Road Steamer, and I, I think it's going to be ugly. I think we called him a criminal if I'm not mistaken. Three and oh, the count to Hansky. I hope Robbie the Road Steamer <laughs> is a DJ out west somewhere, <laughs> not around here. Is he around here, guys? Uh, oh, oh, no. Buddy. Oh, that's great. Oh, Fantastic news. Oh, that's great. It's good. He's ripping us every morning on BCN or wherever he's on. Sure, he also has big friends. We're going to get bigger <laughs> friends, Don. <laughs> this one lined to right down the line, and it's a fair ball. Crisp to third and beyond. Hinsky to second. The throw will go to second. The Red Sox take a 2 nothing lead. Hinsky driving in a run. Well, right now the Red Sox are just sitting on this uh, fastball from Liz because he has not showed them the ability of getting anything else over the plate. So they're able to crank it up on these 95 to 99 fastballs, hooking it and pulling it as Hinsky. And of course, with crisp spe speed, he scores easily. I know a guy named Big Mike. 
And I'm going to call Big Mike, who has security <laughs> service. I'm going to get the biggest bodyguards we can get. Bigger than Robbie Rhodes Stevens. I know Big Mike. The Big Mike can't you know, you know take care of both of them. I know exactly you who know you're talking Big about. Mike. I know Big Mike. I've seen you with Big Mike. I'm afraid of Big Mike. I think he's in New Jersey right now, but I know who to call to get him. And I'm going to tell Big Mike to bring the biggest, biggest mics he can find because we just tore apart Ro Robbie Roadsteamer. Roadsteamer. <laughs> I didn't even know his name. I, I know. I mean, we saw him. I think we saw him more than once. Oh, God. We're in big trouble. Bob Levine, if you're listening tonight, and I know you are from down in the Cape, please call Big Mike. And tell him we may need his services and and bring the biggest guys that he knows so we can get in and out of this ballpark. Please, Bob. Call DJ him. Road Steamer, we really like you. But we're gonna have bigger guys than you. I, I really like you. Can't imagine I said anything terrible except I think we said that he looked like he may have escaped from somewhere. <laughs> well, we look forward to that. The next socks appeal. Here's Julio Lugo with Hetsky at second base. He's up to 32 pitches with one out here in the second inning. The Red Sox have gotten him for two runs, a run in the first and the home run by David Ortiz. An RBI double for Eric Hetsky. Inside two and one. There he tries to bro uh, throw a breaking ball, a slide, and misses with that. So again, Red Sox can basically sit there and just sit on his fastball. Tries to snap off the slider. It just stays inside very flat. He's got a first pitch strike to one of the first eight batters so far. So working behind a lot and is throwing more balls than strikes. As Terry Francona getting the word from Paul Lassard down the runway with J.D. Drews. Let's we'll see if. He takes over a right field or not. And the Red Sox take the field. Again, it looked like a foul ball off the uh, right foot of J.D. Drew. Cranks this foul, hangs it two and two, and we'll look at the Drew injury. I saw Fred Lynn back in 1979, who was having an MVP season, hit a ball just like that and broke a bone in his foot at the end of the season. Held off. To our left and it hangs at two and two. We we'll go two for his last 18 over the last four games. Bobby Kelty is getting himself ready, or if he can play. Terry Francona said that he was asked before the game if he could even pinch it. Yeah, it looks like he's doing some stretching right now, so apparently he can. As this one to shallow left out goes to Hata. In comes Peyton. Easier play for Peyton, who handles out number two of the inning. That certainly looks like Bobby Kelty getting ready to uh, come in for the Red Sox. Two down Hensky in scoring position at second base. Here's Kevin Cash, who's two for 11. In the Red Sox uniform so far. No homers and a run batted in. It's all set to catch Tim Wakefield for the third time tonight. But no scratch when Wakefield was scratch. Some more back stiffness. And instead, it's Julian Tavares on the mound tonight for the Red Sox. He's on the move. Well, you wonder if Kelty's able to go. You saw yeah. Kelty go down the steps, and Terry wasn't sure this afternoon whether he'd be able to go either. So uh, maybe Tito's going to go out there. Knows <laughs> <laughs> he's going to manage. In the second straight day as Terry goes to deal with whatever he's dealing with. That's 
one on the ground left side as Mora to his left. The throw in time. The Red Sox had a run to their total. We played two, and it's a two nothing Boston lead. I win. I'm a winner. There's a better place to play. I'm a winner. Foxwoods Resort Casino, home of the only poker room in New England. Check out the action at foxwoods.com. The first sport utility vehicle. The first full-time four-wheel drive. And now, Jeep introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business, and no other car company matches it. So come and check out our largest lineup of Jeep vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Well-qualified returning Chrysler lessees get a low mileage lease on Liberty Sport for just two nineteen dollars a month. First batch of Samuel Adams was a homebrew. This year, what we're doing for the first time is a homebrew competition just for New England. To marry the passion for brewing great beer. And that is good. With the passion all of the fans have in New England for football. Enter the Sam Adams Patriot Homebrew Competition. The winner will have their beer brewed at the Samuel Adams Boston Brewery. And served at Gillette Stadium during the 2008 season. Get your homebrew kit and instructional video at samadams.com. If you like drinking beer, making beer is the next best thing. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts knows it's not easy being a regular, everyday working guy. To prove it, we tried this experiment with hip-hop star Jermaine Dupree. Do I get a ticket or something? Nah, we ain't got no ticket. Made for the regular, everyday folks. The tasty new Bacon Lover's Supreme Omelette. America runs on Dunkin'. For a chance to win great football prizes, visit DunkinDonuts.com. No purchase necessary. Boston Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by your local Kia dealers. Olympia Sports, the official sporting goods retailer of the New England Sports Network. And by Dunkin' Donuts. Well, the answer is Bobby Kelty. The question was who was going to take over in right field for J.D. Drew. As he went out after fouling a pitch off the top of his fleet and Bobby Kelty is in and right field for the Red Sox. Well rosters do expand tomorrow and you can bet the Red Sox will have an outfielder of uh, some sort of up here we guess we'd imagine uh, Jacoby Ellsbury wouldn't it. Yes. You think. Mm -hmm. Red Sox also need a starting pitcher for tomorrow. John Lester going on Sunday. Juan Hernandez leads it off. And yeah, take strike one. Apparently Clay Buckholz is on his regular schedule, scheduled to pitch for the Pawtucket Red Sox tomorrow. So you got to wonder about that possibility. We've already seen him once. Another announcement: the Red Sox will be making after the game, most likely. Ramon Hernandez, Jay Payton, and Brian Roberts. Scheduled for the Orioles here in the top of the third. Red Sox on top, 2 0. And Hernandez skies one to center. Crisp started back now in and over. One down. Join Josh Beckett and other Boston sports heroes for the Beckett Bowl, a star studded charitable bowling tournament at Town Line 10 Pin on September 13th. All proceeds benefit the Josh Beckett Foundation and Children's Hospital Boston. Corporate sponsorships are still available. Call 617 338 2766 or visit BeckettBowl.com for more information. Steven Tyler in the house. Watch Red Sox Orioles tonight from Fenway Park. Just been like one celebrity after another these last yeah. couple of days. So he paid in the 256, five homers, 46 runs batted in. He cranks it to left, and it's by the dive of Hinsky. Hinsky thought it was going to hang up long enough to make a bid, and to second base goes Jay Payton. That ball was absolutely smoked by Jay Payton. A sinking line drive with top spin, and uh, Hinsky thought maybe he could make the play on the dive, but quickly it gets by him. Fortunately, the big wall's there, and it's only a double. 
You make a play like that at Yankee Stadium where we just came from, you're talking about three bases. So one down Peyton picks up his 18th double of the season. And it's back up at the top of the order for Brian Roberts. Second time through now for the Orioles. Roberts grounded out to shortstop first time up. Julian Tavares does not have a strikeout yet tonight. He has not walked anybody. Three ground ball outs. Four fly ball outs. But no strikeouts yet for Julian. One down in the inning. Outside, a ball and a strike to Roberts. The all star second baseman for the Baltimore Orioles. Signed a two year contract extension, which will take him through the 2009 season with the Orioles. Roberts trailing Kyle Crawford in the stolen base race. Crawford with 43, Roberts with 39. Corey Patterson also in that with 36. Roberts fouls it off the end of the bat. The count evens up now. Two and two. Sending Chris back. Coco in front of the track to make the catch for out number two. Tagging and heading for third is Peyton. The throw is not going to be in time. Yeah, Peyton's able to move over to third base 90 feet away. You mentioned Don a strange breeze here tonight at Fenway Park as it's blowing in from center field. You don't normally see that unless it's April. Not a, not a real strong one but I mean the, that direction is very unusual. These were blowing harder than it was at the beginning of the game, also, as it is picked up here at Fenway. We're two down in the top of the third. Jay Payton at third base. And here's Corey Patterson. Patterson grounded out to first base, and Kevin Euclid's first time up back in the first. Side for a ball. And the Royals has a team hitting at 271. That is sixth in the American League. Red Sox are fifth coming in at 277. Well, Baltimore has done incredibly well this year. Has been defense. They're tops in the league in defense. They committed just 67 errors. And pitching has truly been the problem. 4.78 earned run average. That's 12th in the American League. Only Chicago and Tampa Bay with a higher earned run average. And certainly we have just seen those two teams on the road both struggled certainly from a pitching standpoint against the Red Sox especially the White Sox but it has been a disappointment for these guys the bullpen spent 42 million during the offseason to better this bullpen and it has not been better. Two and one in the count to Corey Patterson. And the Red Sox catch a somewhat of a break too as they will not see Eric Badad. Badad was scheduled to pitch this Saturday tomorrow, but he's going to miss a start. 
Bedard really having a fantastic season uh, for Baltimore leads the league in strikeouts with 221. Pretty good break there for the Red Sox in that regard. This one chopped up over the mound. Pedroia ranging. A stutter step and a throw that's dug out at first by Euclid for the out. They leave Peyton at third. We play two and a half, two nothing, Boston. Your flight attendants will be coming through the cabin shortly, offering snacks for sale for $5. Also available, in-flight magazines for $3. If you'd like to run a pillow or blanket, that'll be $2. You need to use the restroom? That fee's $4. If you need anything else, feel free to push that call button for a minimum fee of $1. How far are they gonna go? For 35 years, Southwest Airlines has offered low fares with no strings attached. You are now free to move about the country. for our fuel comes from oil on the ground. A lot of it comes from our people, who year in and year out put so much of their energy into everything they do. So you can be sure that when you put Valero gas into your tank, you're going to get a lot out of it. Valero, the energy to take you anywhere. Now, see, when people think of GEICO, right, they think of car insurance, and of course, saving money. But sometimes that can lead even the savviest driver astray. Take, for example, the motorcycle owner. He calls Geico wanted to save money on his car insurance, only to realise that he doesn't actually own a car. Well, needless to say, he's quite embarrassed, isn't he? Doesn't matter. Geico insures motorcycles and ATVs as well. That way, no one ends up looking foolish. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Own a timeshare or campground membership? Turn it into cash. Timeshares only got us our full asking price before our next monthly payment was due. Timeshares only is the nation's largest, number one, most successful timeshare agency, representing properties from the biggest names in the industry. No one sells more timeshares. Call now and receive a free information kit, including 10 secrets to timeshares. You owe it to yourself to work with the best. Don't delay. Call 800-348-0276. Last half of the third inning. And it's Justin Pedroia leads it off for the Red Sox against Radimus Liz with the Red Sox on top two to nothing. Pedroia a strikeout victim in the first inning. The only strikeout for Liz so far in tonight's contest. Tried to hold up Diddy. They'll check. He did, so Joe West didn't go around. This is the changeup from Liz, and this is a pretty good one. Dustin Pedroia does a good job to control the head of that bat. Popped up. And the move is Hernandez, but that'll get back into the seats. Car shopping is fast and easy when you start at Boston.com slash cars. Find more than 50,000 new and used vehicles locally. That's Boston.com slash cars. One two two Pedroia. This is a fair ball out of the reach of Milan. And the right field line Pedroia thinking two as Marquez digs it out, but it's a double for Justin Pedroia to get the bottom of the third inning started. Well, Pedroia saw a lot of off-speed pitches. The changeup, and this is the slider this time, and he's able to take the slider with the inside-out swing right down the first base line. Marquez is being very cautious down in that right field corner as he should be. And that playing it into a triple. Thirty doubles on the season for Pedroia. The leader in that category is Vladimir Guerrero. He has 44. So Pedroia at second base. Kevin Euchel is flat out to right field first time up. Big strike one from Liz. Took a little off that time, 94 miles per hour. And there's already action in the Baltimore bullpen. They got a left hander up, Kurt Perkins. Liz in his first outing lasted six innings, giving up five runs. Here he is in the third, and they get action up. Ah, 
Andy Uplis gets hit. When, when Euclid is upset about here, as C.B. Butner comes rushing out to get between him and the pitcher like Euclid was going to do something, he wasn't going to do anything. It was a breaking ball that hit him. He knew that. We've seen some wildness early from uh, Liz. Well, it was a breaking ball or an off speed pitch, but it was not the fastball. And Euclid just spins around. He was heading to first base, but watch Butner come out. And I think that kind of upset. Uh, See the, uh, Kevin Euclid says, I'm not going anywhere. Twelfth time that Kevin Euclid has been hit by a pitch this season. It's the Red Sox in that category. Others have tried to hit him. And here's David Ortiz with runners at first and second, nobody out. Big Poppy hit a home run first time up. It's ball one outside. This is a big guy, this guy pitching with a lot of power, but that is not the polished product, that's for sure. And their first strike with a count one and one. And David Ortiz starting to get hot. Seven homers, 19 RBIs in his last 14 games at a 392 clip. And one missing, and it's two and one. And he's about to throw his 50th pitch of the night. Down by the shoe tops, and the count evens at two and two. And a double to begin the inning. Yukel is hit by a pitch, first and second. Nobody out. Peyton heads over into the corner with a wind blowing it back, and it'll be hit by a fan. It's going to be a foul ball. Peyton trying to make it an out and a fan interference, but clearly not. Is Ed Hickox down there to get a good look? Now apparently, the ball was in the stands when the fan uh, made the play on it. The fan reaches over the wall and interferes with Peyton. Then he can be called out. But no, that ball was uh, off a glove of a young kid, but the, the, the ball was not going to be uh, able to be played by Peyton. He's got Wally and he's got a ball. I mean, how good is that? <laughs> they didn't get any better than that. Not so good for Jay Payton, but good for the youngster. Ortiz now lines to second. It's picked on one hop to second for one. They've got in a rundown at second base, and they do not get Pedroia. They already have as they attack Euclid for the second time. Euclid is out at second on the fourth side of the bag at second. I'm confused. One hopper into the glove of Roberts, who went to Tejada for the out at second base. Then, leaving late was Pedroia, who was able to get back to the bag at second. Right, they get the force out at second Correct. base because the ball was not caught in the air by Roberts. second base and Roberts, and of course, so Pedroia gets back to the bag. There's the force out there first. Now they're going to try to get Pedroia. And Pedroia gets back in safely with the head for a slice, goes back to tag Euclid for the second time. So he was but out that's, twice. That's only going to count as one out. <laughs> you know, I don't know if Sahada even touched the bag at second. He wasn't sure. Because if he doesn't touch the bag at second, then Euclid wasn't out. And as the pitch in there for a strike. Maybe Tejada figured if he tagged Euclid three times, they'd have three outs in the inning. Good on to Tina Servacio. Tina? And on that foul ball, J.D. Drew hit off his right foot, has left him with a contusion. He will be further examined, but that foul ball did it. Again, J.D. Drew with a contusion on the right foot. Okay, Tina, thank you very much.
0 2 to Lowell is a ball one and two. Again as I mentioned the thing you worry about when you see things like this are broken bones in the foot and what I've seen that happen many times on foul balls that hit guys you know on top of the foot on the ankle. Right now a contusion. Swing and a miss and Lowell strikes out it's the second strikeout for Liz. And there's two down in the inning. Now thinking, watching Liz pitch. Now he comes up from the minor leagues. Can you imagine facing this guy? Now he has a very good changeup down and in to Mike Lowell. Uh, in minor league conditions where the lighting is not really as good as the major league level, as hot as he throws, as wild as he's been, that's going to be an uncomfortable night for the opposition. A little scary. He has two outs here as Bobby Kelty has been pressed into service with J.D. Drew now out of the lineup. 259 a home run 11 runs batted in for Kelty. That's who came into Tuesday's game defensively but left after just one inning with a soreness in his lower back and has been listed as day to day has not played since last Tuesday. That's another very good change up from Liz. He's thrown a couple of nasty ones in the last few hitters, striking out Lowell on one, and here's another one. It almost acts like a split finger, but it's not. Outside for a ball, Kelty not chasing, one and two. He's about to throw his 60th pitch of the night. Outside, two and two. Crisp waiting on deck. Red Sox got a run in the first on the home run by Ortiz. An RBI double by Hensky in the second. In the dirt. And it's a full count. Had been 0 2. They keep trying to put Kelty away with the changeup and misses with a couple of run the count full. Now both runners will be off at second and first. The ball in a gap could score two runs. Strike three call as Kelty strikes out to end the third. Red Sox strand a pair. It's 2 nothing Boston at the end of three. Behind the scenes. At Hi, I'm Steve Schumann. This is Emma Schumann. We'd like to invite you to our summer celebration sale. During our summer celebration sale, I'd like to pass on exceptional savings on exciting new products like these. The economical four-wheel drive Jeep Compass. Or how about the all-new Jeep Patriot? Make the most of your summer fun in the 2007 Jeep Wrangler. Come see the 2007 trail rated Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. See us for us. See us fast, but see us and save. It's the Chevy Model Year Indie event, where you'll find the best offer ever on the all new Silverado. 0% APR for 60 months on Silverado half ton extended and crew cabs for well qualified buyers. Just click and go to Chevy.com to find the Silverado you want, then get to your Chevy dealer before it's gone. Get this great offer, which amounts to $56.19 in average finance savings for 07 Silverado half ton extended and crew cab models. Click on Chevy.com, then see your main Chevy dealer. Mm -hmm. They've got the sharpest pencil in town. And they just sit around that showroom figuring deals and whittling that old pencil down. They know that if you buy once, you're gonna be back. So instead of buying one, you're buying two, and that's a fact. They've got the sharpest pencil in town. So come on down, neighbor. The coffee pot's on. Underway here at Fenway Park. If you have tickets for Saturday or Sunday's game, bring a new pack of white cotton socks to Fenway to benefit Boston Healthcare for the homeless. For complete information, check out Nesson.com. Great to have with us Bob Child, the executive director of Socks for Socks. Bob, great to see you. Glad to be here. 
very successful last year and here we are again but it sounded like last year went terrifically and hoping for more this year. It's a pleasure to be back and we really appreciate what uh, the Red Sox Foundation and Nesson has done to help with this. Now this is Saturday and Sunday right and uh, where, where will they be uh, collecting the Sox. Uh, well for folks who are fortunate enough to have tickets for these uh, games on set on what uh, on Saturday and Sunday uh, bring them to the ballpark and leave them uh, at with volunteers at the gates. And just over the reach of Eric Kinski's outstretched glove heading for two is Nick Markakis thrown not in time and a leadoff double for Markakis. I think one thing that we have learned uh, certainly over the last couple of years in the Sox for Sox is how important Sox are especially during the winter months for a lot of the homeless. Yeah I, you know being homeless is hard in a lot of ways but it's particularly hard on the feet people spend a lot of time uh, on their feet often uh, in all kinds of weather. Uh, hard to keep feet dry and clean, uh, and it's a real staple of healthcare for people who are homeless. Is giving, is keeping feet dry and clean, and providing them with clean socks. Certainly, Red Sox Nation coming up in a big way last year. Boston's healthcare for the homeless program serves over 9,000 homeless men, women, and children annually. We're. Uh, uh, Providing care uh, at probably 70 different locations across the city. We have doctors and nurses in hospital clinics and shelter clinics, soup kitchens, under bridges, on the streets, uh, wherever homeless people are. You know, we see these stories all the time, and yet, uh, as, as hard as you work to get people into shelters, uh, into you know, cold conditions, into uh, climate control, some people don't want to leave. They just, they just don't want to come in, and that's got to be very frustrating. Yeah, the, most people do come in. There's a small segment of the homeless population that really is uh, unable to deal with shelters. And shelters are pretty uh, overwhelming places. Uh, so if you have any uh, problems with being in, in close quarters with lots of people, it's, uh, there, there are some people for whom that just doesn't work. Uh, and they avoid shelter and stay on the street. You know, fans can certainly also volunteer at any time also and make donations also as well if they are where do they go what do they do. Uh, this one crushed to left field that is up and gone ooh. into the monster seats for Miguel Tejada two run shot and just like that the Orioles have tied the game two to two. Now Tejada jumps on a Julian Tavares fastball. So after a line drive to left that fool Hinsky and got over his head. Tejada who has been swinging the bat very well since coming off the disabled list. A line drive home run of the first row of the monster seats. Well, sorry to see that. Yes. <laughs> I was asking about uh, donations and volunteers what fans can do. Yeah. Folks can, can learn more about uh, how to help out by getting onto our website um, and tuning in there. It's www.bhchp.org. Uh, and there uh, we can always use volunteers and we certainly can use donations uh, both of, of uh, uh, cash and, and other things that are helpful to our patients. Well, Bob, we thank you so much for coming up. We hope all Red Sox Nation who are coming here this weekend will bring Sox to Fenway Park, uh, the Sox for Sox program that was so great last year. Hope it's great again this year. We thank you for all you do. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming up. Thank you and good luck. Well, the game now tied 2 to 2 as Miguel Tejada has done it with a two run shot in his 17th home run of the year. Thanks to Bob Taub for joining us in Boston Healthcare for the homeless program in Socks for Socks. There's a strike to Millar and it's now three and one. Tried to hold up and did apparently they'll check. Didn't go around. This is Joe West, and it's ball four. The first walk given up by Tavares. To a non-winning five-dollar and ten-dollar Red Sox instant tickets for the Mass Lottery at the cash. With every Red Sox victory in the million-dollar double play, learn how to play at MassLottery.com, and stay tuned to Nesson after every Red Sox victory to see if you're a winner. Please play responsibly.
And the Lard first base. And this inning has not gone very well for Tavares. A double and two run shot and a walk. And now Aubrey Huff the batter. Grounded out to second base. First time up. Take strike one. With a 7 9 record, 4.84 earned run average, his 22nd start of the year. Made seven appearances from the pen. As this is sent foul down the left field line, back and out of play. And pressed into service tonight. As Tavares originally scheduled to go tomorrow against Garrett Olson for the Orioles. But uh, in there tonight for Tim Wakefield. Third start of the season against the Orioles for Tavares, 0 and 1 with a 6.30 earned run average. In his two previous assignments, seven earned runs in 10 innings pitched. Check swing foul, and it hangs at 0 and 2. This player profile is brought to you by Sovereign Bank, the official bank of the Red Sox cable network. And 21 starts and the seven relief appearances. This was at last week of spring training when it was announced that Tavares would be coming from the pen into the Red Sox rotation. The announcement in the same breath was that Jonathan Papelbon was going from the rotation of spring training back to being the closer. That really changed the dynamic of everything on this ball club. Uh, you know, you bring early in spring training, there's no legitimate closer down there. They're trying different guys out, and it just just seemed like you know it was not going to work. And then finally the Papelbon thing comes to get the surprise from Okajima and off go the Red Sox to the great start. One time remember we were talking about Joel Pinheiro as a possible closer among others and it wasn't how that all changed in a heartbeat. And it just seemed like it was the right decision the only decision at that point for the Red Sox at that stage of spring training just a matter of when and finally did happen that last week. And for the second state spring training Papelbon was Going in the rotation like a regular starter, which he did the year before, also before he was the closer taken over for Keith Folk to begin that season. This is up the middle and by the dive of Pedroia. As Malai will head for third base, Chris throws into second. All of a sudden, the Orioles, who have already scored two runs in the inning, have runners at first and third still with nobody out. It had been a very, fairly easy game uh, for the first three innings for Tavares to see Pedroia die for this one, and it gets underneath the glove. And Malai, of course, the play in front of him continues on to third base. I wonder if Pedroia hurt his wrist on that. Sometimes you dive and you get the, that wrist. Trapped underneath you. Tavares not real happy about it. I think Pedroia rolled his wrist over on that dive, and it looked like he came up and uh, holding his right hand. There's the dive, and you see sometimes how you roll it over when that glove uh, and the hand hits that way, and there's no question uh, that that uh, certainly hurt the uh, left hand or wrist, the glove hand of Pedroia. So Millar at third base, Huff at first base, nobody out. And here's Melvin Mora. Fouled out to the first baseman, Kevin Euclid, in the second inning. Take strike one over the inside corner from Tavares. The Royals coming in with a nine game losing streak. This is the second nine game losing streak of the season. First one was June 9th through the 19th. Tough part about that too is a lot of that came at home from them, and it's, well, that's just awful when you're playing that way at your own ballpark. Yeah, the homestand they were one and nine on a ten-game homestand, and you look forward to you really do to getting out of there and getting on the road. They See allowed one. Yeah, excuse ahead. me, go ahead, Don. <laughs> they allowed 100 runs in the homestand, 
Well, look at their numbers during the nine game losing streak but. 100 runs. In the homestand. 10 games 100 runs. That if I do my math right is yeah. 10 per game is that correct. You're absolutely correct. Now remember. But it was swayed a little bit because there was the 30 run game in there right hosted by the Texas Rangers. But if you average it out it's 10 for a game you're not right. going to win any games like that. No. I would agree. Ramon Hernandez waiting on deck one and two the count to more. Have held a lead in 103 of 132 games. In fact, in one stretch, it led in 20 straight games, but went 9 and 11 in those 20 games. In the dirt outside, sprawling is Kevin Cash, and it's a full count. Well, Kevin Cash not having to catch the knuckleball tonight, but that sinking fastball in the dirt. Nice play by Cash. Saves a run. Millar third, cross the diamond, Aubrey Huff at first. Nobody out. And a full count to Melvin Mora. It was a runner at first. Mora chops it foul outside of third. Huff was off at first base. They certainly would expect that uh, with Tavares, who is a sinker ball pitcher, get that runner going and try to stay out of a double play. Very late break uh, on the 3 2 count. You're not supposed to get a good break. You don't want to be picked off. Two again. Huff going again, and it's grounded through the left side of the left field. Millar scores from third base to put the Orioles on top, three to two. And in a heartbeat here, the Orioles have taken a three-two advantage, scoring three straight here in the bottom, of, in the top of the fourth. Now the last two ground balls just finding the hole in the infield here. One by Pedroia. This one uh, to the right of Lugo. He has no chance to get it. And the inning goes on for the Baltimore Orioles. So quickly, uh, some action in the Red Sox bullpen. Looks like Javier Lopez starting to loosen up. It's first and second now with nobody out. And Ramon Hernandez coming up. Right out to center field, first time up. Missing inside ball one. Hernandez, after the All Star break, started off very quickly, hitting a 356 in the first 18 games after the break. But in the last 17 games, he slid to just 115, seven for his last 61. He actually had a stretch recently until Tuesday where he didn't have a hit over 26 at bats, was 0 for 26. And on the breakdown, average per month, not very consistent. A great April. In June, not so great. In July, fantastic. As out is cash to talk to Tavares. From the people on the Green Monster comes WB Mason's What a Bargain Super Clearance Center. You will save up to 75% on hundreds and hundreds of new and used office products located in Boston at 647 Summer Street, across from the Boston Athletic Club. There's plenty of free parking. Hoover WB Mason's What a Bargain Store. This one right back through the box off the bag at second it kicks into center field Huff is going to try and score he will 
to put the Orioles on top four to two as Ramon Hernandez drives in a run. Now you know we mentioned the Oriole offense is very respectable. I mean they they can score some runs and they are certainly doing so here in this inning. Their problem this year has been pitching for the most part. As this inning just continues, the ground ball hits the second base bag. Another run comes across, and still nobody out here in the fourth inning. We'll start with a double by Marquez, a two-run shot by Tejada, walked to Millar, single for Huff, single for Morris, single for Hernandez. It's four to two Baltimore with nobody out. First and third now. And Jay Payton, the batter, John Farrell on the phone. We'll see about to Javier Lopez and whether or not he is ready yet. Payton grounds it foul. Put the ball hard the first time up, getting a double. Jay Payton. And the third inning. That's the number nine spot for the Orioles. Started the season on the disabled list. Got injured the last week of spring training for the Orioles with a strained left hamstring. Five homers, 46 runs batted in on the season for Jay Payton. Side one and two. Williams played in 110 of 135 games for the Orioles. Top of the order, Brian Roberts waiting on deck. And the Orioles batting here in the top of the fourth, still nobody out. Inside two and two. I mentioned many times, Don, you know, the motivation for teams like the Orioles, like the Tampa Bay Devil Rays, as you go into this last month, just beat contending teams. They're going to be playing them all the time. And, and that's how you get through the last month of the season if you're a club that's a way out of everything. You know, we're fortunate to cover the Red Sox on a daily basis. But you wonder about some of these teams, the Tampa Bays and other clubs that certainly we see a lot of. I mean, has it become more individual for those guys who Absolutely. Are, are planning on their future careers, not so much worrying about a team aspect? Absolutely. You know, and it's up to the manager, and of course, Fremley here and uh, Joe Madden down in Tampa Bay to, to try to keep these guys focused on, you know, a team effort. But it's hard when you pick the paper up every morning and you're 21 and 26 games back. So individually, as a player, you try to, you know, put the best possible season forward that you can. It's hard to play that way. Broken back, grounded to third. Low uh, has got trapped. Mora as Cash will run him back and apply the tag, making a double play, but he throws it away. Now in the way was Lugo of Hernandez for a moment. Not going to be costly, but he was obstructing him, and Trembley's going to come out and say just that. As in the way was Lugo there in the end of it they do get out number one finally well, after you make a play now we'll watch the, this is the proper play here by the base runner because you don't want to have a double play so you do get caught in a rundown now cash runs them all the way back tags them out then the throw is going to be out of the way now once you have not a, a run of that play once the ball gets by Lugo he has to get out of the way of the base runner that's why Trembley's out there arguing right now because you're right it could be called obstruction. Now the question is, you know, would have been able to score from there because you see uh, Hinsky had come in to back the player, but a legitimate uh, concern and argument here for Tremblay. Tremblay's hot here dealing with Joe West. Error charge to cash on the play that allows Peyton to get up to second base. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by your New England Ford dealer. Visit your local Ford store. Go to NewEnglandFord.com to register to win tickets to the September 16th race in Loudon, New Hampshire. As Dave Tremblay has been ejected from the game and going to get his money worth now. It's going to have to be removed here in a second as he has given Joe West an earful. Well, he's following Joe West all the way back to first base and he better not bump him. If he bumps him, 
course that's going to be some type of suspension. Joe West laughing at him. See that's the kind of thing there that you know. Let the guy have his say. And, and to West's credit he walks away. OK there's not much he, he can do about that. Now Trump is going to give it to the other umpire the second base umpire Rob Uano, on the way back to the dugout. So he's hot. He's out of the game. Nine straight losses do that to you too. Now very very strange play and, and, and first of all it is the correct base running play because you want to stay out of a double play. So the Red Sox low comes home. They get the out in the rundown. Now they, what they're arguing is that once the ball gets by on the errant throw here that Lugo is interfering and, and you know what he's got a point. Now the question is well, he, he, not, he would not have been able to score from here. Kaczynski backed it up. But the fact is, once you are not involved in the play anymore, you cannot obstruct the runner. And that's what Trembley argued about. Well, he certainly got a lot off his chest. Well, he hasn't quit on the season, has he? No. First time he's been ejected. Uh, Joe West ejecting him, but he had more to say after leaving Joe. Well, the new pitcher on for the Red Sox is Javier Lopez. Now Lopez making his 49th appearance a two and one record 33 innings 29 hits 15 walks and 20 strikeouts his last outing coming in New York on the 29th gave up a hit in that ball game and also a walk on this week's top nine countdown of all things Sox host Hazel May will show you the best plays in August by the Red Sox and you won't believe who's sliding into third base. It's all part of this week's all new Granite City Electric Ultimate Red Sox show Sunday at 1230 right before our live pregame coverage begins. So you sliding into third no. base? There'll be no sliding for me. Well here's Brian Roberts. He takes ball one inside from Javier Lopez. Now you see what happens on the exchange for the Orioles. Okay, first and third. Always looks bad when a guy gets caught in a rundown, but they do it for a reason because they want to stay away from the double play. Well, they get more out, but they do get two men in scoring position. It's worse when you get in that rundown and you still end up with guys at first and second. That's yeah, real. But bad. you're still supposed to do that because uh, you, you you don't want to have you know you're better off having a situation where it's first and second with. One out rather than two outs, you know, and the man still at third base. It worked out for the Orioles as Roberts chops it to third. Lowe's coming home right again. Here we go again. As they run Hernandez back, taking third is Jay Payton. So the out there. And Payton remains off the bag, two down. And at first is Brian Roberts. Little surprise to see Roberts uh, still at first base. Bounces the ball, a low, a low comes home, and Roberts, you can see, running down the line. Then the rundown starts, and you would think that maybe Roberts should have been at second base. Let's see what he does. He's not even looking at the play right now. Now he does, and decides to stay at first base. Strange inning this is. Yes. Two outs in the inning. Ninth man to bat in the inning. It's Corey Patterson who's 0 for 2. He's granted out twice. A four run inning so far for the Orioles. All the runs charged to Julian Tavares. And he lasted to three and a third innings. And it's seven hits so far, the four runs. This one fouled down the left field line back and out of play. Now there's action in the Red Sox bullpen, so it may be Lopez just for Patterson and then Marcakis, the left handers. Then you get back to the righters and the righties and Kyle Steiner loosening up. And grounds it right side. Pedroia ranging and throwing him out to end an inning. Wow, an inning for the Orioles that saw them score four times. They take a 4 2 lead after three and a half. Hey, boss, do we have Aflac? Yeah, we have something else. 
But if you're hurt and miss work, does it pay cash like Aflac does? Nah. Or let you spend it any way you want, like for gas and groceries? Nah. Or help with everyday bills like Aflac does? Nah, nah, nah. There's only one Aflac. Ask about it at work. Nice try, boss. Nah, nah. The first wind tunnel testing. The first muscle car. And now Chrysler introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business, and no other car company matches it. Chrysler, now offering our most innovative line of vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Well-qualified returning Chrysler lessees get a low-mileage lease on 300 for just $249 a month. The wait is over. Olympia Sports' biggest footwear sale of the year is happening right now. Buy one pair of brand name athletic footwear, get a second pair of equal or lesser value for only half price. This sale ends soon, so get it at Olympia Sports today. Our family was hit by a drunk driver. Everyone in the car was injured. Are you involved in a lawsuit waiting to receive compensation you deserve? Oasis Legal Finance can advance you the money you need now. And if you lose your case, you owe us nothing. Our attorney recommended Oasis Legal Finance. We called and in two days, we had money in the bank. There are no upfront fees. And again, if you lose your case, you owe us nothing. Call now. Now, we're getting our life back on track. Everyone's still talking about Superbad, the number one movie in America, two weeks in a row. Nice! It will live on forever as a true classic. That's the world I one day want to live in. Superbad. Boop. Rated R. Now playing in theaters everywhere. There's a great new look to the Red Sox Nation program in 2007, and as new rewards, gifts, and unique ticket opportunities become part of the global fan base that has made their citizenship in Red Sox Nation official, visit RedSox.com today. As the weekend goes on, I'll be giving you more information on uh, what's going on with the presidency of Red Sox Nation. I got some good information today, but we'll wait for the proper time. Coco Crisp leading it off. A swing and a miss. And he's quickly down 0 2. Adamus Liz has got a lead to work with now. The Orioles scoring four times in the top half of this inning. Chris Pinsky and Lugo to bat here in the bottom of the fourth. Liz has struck out three batters, including back to back batters in Lowell and Pelty to end the third inning. Sox with a total of four hits in the game tonight. Hitting the home run by David Ortiz in the first inning. They get an RBI double from Hinsky in the second for their two runs. Outside, full count out of Crisp. Down to first base, lead off walk. Second time he's walked. Let's check in with Tina Cervasio. It's sort of ironic, Don, that before the game today, Terry Francona was talking about how this August was much better than last August when referring to injuries and guys spending time on the DL. And then today, Wakefield is scratched and Drew leaves the game. But the manager explains how this team is built to fill those holes when needed. Well, I think there's a couple things. First of all, if you get pitching, you always stay in games, and we've had pitching. Even when we lost Shield, Gabbard came up and really gave us some good starts. We have some young players. You look at Ellsbury, Moss, that we've shown we're not afraid to play. And the September 1st call-up day couldn't have come at a better time, so we will probably be hearing those names, Ellsbury and Moss, very soon. Okay, Tina, thank you very much. Jerry, last year, I think the thing that surprised me most about this season comparing it to last year was at the break. Virtually the Red Sox had the same record this year that they had last year. 
You think back to last year, and all you think about is the dreadful way in which it ended the last month of the season. Of course, that five game series against the Yankees. You hear Terry Francona talking about filling holes. They just ran out of ways to fill holes last year, and it was holes that were created by the pitching staff last year, which certainly made a big difference. Yeah, the Francona's point is, is you know, if you can get good pitching like the Red Sox have got, you can survive some injuries. And, and you know, as long as you keep the other team from scoring, uh, you're going to have a chance to win. Last year was just a total disaster. I mean, it, it seemed like for a while there was a player a day yeah. that was going down, and the rotation at the end of last year didn't look anything like it was supposed to look. And the biggest difference this season, at least in the first half from a record standpoint, was just the way the Yankees played. They just played bad baseball virtually the first half of the season. And of course, going down last year was Papel Bond. End of last year, and September the first is when uh, Papel Bond went down last year, leaving. A game against the Toronto Blue Jays. And at the time that injury happened, boy, that looked very, very bad. I was stunned. That, you know that I thought for sure when you saw a guy's shoulder drop like that, yeah. first thing that comes to mind, sir. Off-season program that had him back in spring training, ready to go. And as Eric Kensky bats, he doubled the drive and a run first time up. And in all the count. Is all over the place here. He did sit a while. And the Orioles were scoring four times, and the Red Sox made a pitching change also in the middle of an inning. And another four pitch walk down the first base goes Henske back to back walks. Tonight, after our Red Sox coverage at Sports Desk with Hazel May, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers, you see comprehensive coverage of round one of the Deutsche Bank Championship at TPC Boston in Norton, plus a recap of the Patriots' victory last night against the Giants in their last preseason game. It's all on Sports Desk tonight after our coverage. Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and uh, VJ Singh played in the same group together today. Tom Treblehorn, who is the bench coach, is out there to make the pitching change. It's four to two. Orioles will step aside with the pitching change from Fenway. Stay tuned for an exciting money-making opportunity from SMC. Would you like to make more money, set your own hours, and spend more time with your family? Well, now you can with SMC. It's amazing, I mean, to go to the mailbox and you get $10,000, $50,000 checks. I was buried in debt, and I was sitting around one day and I saw an SMC commercial. I felt confident that this would work. My best year gross, I did about $350,000. I was making more money than I ever made in my life. SMC supports its members with a huge warehouse stocked with thousands of products that you can sell for profits of up to 300% and more. Call right now to request your free information packet. And remember to ask your operator how you can jumpstart your business with $100 worth of free SMC merchandise. Just pick up the phone and call this toll-free number now. Remember, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. Call 800-708-2826. Ultimate, adjective, not to be improved upon or surpassed. Greatest, unsurpassed. Red Sox, collective noun, not to be improved upon or Hazel May. Proper noun, greatest, ultimate. It's the nine must-see stories each week from Red Sox Nation. Granite City Electric's Ultimate Red Sox Show with Hazel May. The Ultimate Red Sox Show. Proper now. Sundays only on Nesson. Four to two, the Orioles on top. Radimus Liz is done after three plus innings. As the Orioles go to the bullpen, it's Kurt Perkins. Perkins making his 10th appearance recently recalled from Triple A Norfolk. This is the fifth time that he's been up with the Orioles this year as you look at his numbers. 23 hits allowed in 15 innings. Three lefties in the bullpen uh, for the Orioles Birkins, Burris, and Walker. Two on, nobody out, back to back walks by Liz. He leaves responsible for Coco Crisp at second base, or Kinski at first base. Here's Julio Lugo. And he takes ball one. And pretty much the last thing the Orioles wanted after they. Erase the two run deficit to take a 4 2 lead. As for Adamus Liz to walk the first two batters in the bottom half of the inning. And the 1 0. 
right side. 2 0. Oh. Lugo pops it up. Down from first is Malar. He gets crossed up in front of Lugo that makes the catch in foul ground. Literally stepped in front of him and the two almost collided. Malar makes a catch in foul ground for the first out of the inning. Kevin Malar this season has only made one error at first base. And you see uh, Lugo going around Malar. Of course, you have to allow the fielder to make an attempt to, at a play. One down, first and second. And here's Kevin Cash. Got it out to third base, first time up. It's another rule we could change. We're going to change some things we were talking about changing rules. Not allowing the infielder to make the catch. Take him out. <laughs> On the ground is short. To hot at a second for one. On to first. It's a double play. And this inning ends badly as the Red Sox had two on, nobody out. They're gone, trailing four to two. The first NASCAR stock car to reach 200 miles per hour. The first minivan. And now, Dodge introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business. And no other car company matches it. So come check out the best lineup of Dodge vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Now well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months on Durango, Dakota, and Grand Caravan. Hello, banker. Good deal. So this is the perfect opportunity for us to tell you about the $5 Main State Lottery Deal or No Deal Instant Game with two ways to win up to a million dollars, including a chance to win a trip to Hollywood to play Deal or No Deal with me, the banker, and all the models for up to one million dollars. This is the ultimate game for the ultimate lottery play. At VIP Parts, Tires, and Service, we know how to show you and your car a little love. Need tires? Our Speed Lane pros help you make the right selection for the best price guaranteed. And we'll install them in under an hour. No wasted time. Just the biggest selection of name brand quality tires. Michelin, Pirelli, Goodyear, and more in stock when you need them. Installed by qualified service techs faster than anywhere. When you need quality name brand tires, make an appointment in our Speed Lane Bay. VIP. A little love goes a long way. It's amazing how much more people with higher levels of education earn. It can mean millions over a lifetime. If you've been thinking about going back to school, then do what thousands are doing by using the incredible free service offered by Education Connection. We can match you to the right career and the best online schools. We make finding the right schools easy. Let Education Connection find the right school for you. It's free, so call 800-762-0986 or log on to 26edconnectnow.com. Top half of the fifth, four to two, the Orioles on top. As Javier Lopez returns to the mound for the Red Sox, he came on last inning. In relief, of Julian Tavares, last just three and a third, charged with all the runs. The Orioles have all four earned runs. Tavares gave up seven hits, walked one, didn't strike anybody out, and on the hook. And again, this might be the last batter for Lopez in this game. And there's Nick Markakis who's quickly ahead 2 and 0. As Kyle Snyder had been up last inning, back up again this inning. Hensky onto the track to make the catch for the first out of the inning. And Marquez retired. And there's one down in the inning. Miguel Tejada coming up. Shortstop number 10, Miguel Tejada. 
Let's check in with Tina. Both Senator Ted Kennedy and the Red Sox are working hard as advocates for Massachusetts residents to get the health care they need. And Senator, over 47 million people nationally are uninsured. What is Massachusetts doing to change this? Well, first of all, we have a champion, a baseball team with the Red Sox, and they're going to demonstrate it in these next few innings. And, they, and uh, the Red Sox organization has uh, long been uh, committed to uh, health. I think every person in uh, Boston, everybody across the country knows about the Jimmy Fund. And they've always been interested in children and, and in health. And I think what they're doing, let's, uh, what they're doing here, oh, good. <laughs> what they're doing here is they want to make sure that their fans are ever going to uh, health care. So they are uh, working with the governor and uh, the state to make sure that everyone in Massachusetts is going to get covered. And I hope anybody that is watching your program, if for those that are in the stadium, they can. Uh, uh, go to the office that's just here in the stadium and find out how they can get involved in it or then they can go on their website or if they can call the governor's office they'll tell them too. With the Red Sox spreading the word about this new health care reform what kind of impact and influence have you seen? What kind well, of results? You know um, I'd like to see the rest of the uh, baseball teams do this and the rest of the, the uh, football teams you know sports are a big uh, 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 factor in all of our lives and uh, uh, this is uh, always a special time for, for me. This is my good son, uh, Patrick, the good congressman, and my grandson, Teddy. We've got little Teddy, medi medium Teddy, and big Teddy here tonight. And Kiki and Kylie, Kylie are here. But um, health care is an, just enormously important. It has been in my family. Uh, Patrick's a kid of a chronic asthmatic. My son, Teddy, lost his leg to cancer. And um, uh, the, we have seen people don't have coverage, the devastation that a family feels, a mother that has to worry about their child, but they also have to worry about the cause. And what we want to do is to make sure that... Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. So, as I say, winners, Red Sox, health care, and um, we're on for the World Series. And by that time, I hope everybody in Massachusetts is covered. Senator, thank you for joining us here at Fenway Park. Tom, back to you. 4-2 Orioles, we head to the bottom of the fifth. on the lot clearance event. With so many great models to choose from, it's the right time to buy. Right now, you could save on the last of the 07 Toyotas, like FJ Cruiser, with its first ever cash back offer, $500. Or $500 cash back on a rugged Tacoma. Toyota's lots on the lot clearance event ends September 4th. See your New England Toyota dealer now. No. 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 What? I had a virus. Computer's not the problem, Mr. Tucker. It's your network. With Verizon High Speed Internet, you'd have a dedicated line, spyware, and automatic security updates every three hours to keep viruses on. You giving rides? Not today. Step up to Verizon High Speed Internet. The speed you need. Constant security upgrades. All on a dedicated line. Verizon. It's the network. as big as Canada. Molson Canadian. Here's to good nature. It's the final days of Ford's model year clearance. It all ends September 3rd. Just announced, save big with 0% financing or up to 4507 cash back on F-150. It's your last chance to save big on America's best-selling truck. Visit your local Ford store or go to Dustin Pedroia leads it off in the bottom half of the fifth inning, starting to mist a little bit here at Fenway Park. And the Orioles on top 4 2. I thought we were going to be precipitation free. Just a little sprinkle right now, Don. Don't worry about it. The front coming through. And Pedroia struck out of the first. He doubled in the third. He's one for two. Red Sox with four hits. Make it five. In the left field out of the reach of Miguel Tejada. Lead off base hit for Dustin Pedroia. 
Well, the Red Sox have certainly had quite a few base runners. So that's an off-speed pitch, a changeup. It looks like Bedroyer out in front, but defines that hole between third and short. Second time he's been on, double single. Between hits and walks, the Red Sox have had opportunities. The lead runner on here in the bottom of the fifth brings up Kevin Euclid. Slide to right in the first hit by a pitch in the third by Radimus Liz, who hit him. Kirk Perkins back out there. He came on in relief last inning. And returns to the mound here for the Orioles in the fifth. Forty-eight games. Kevin Euclid is hitting a 2.22. The second half has not been as kind as the first half for Kevin Euclid. The average of 2.89 heading into tonight's action. Pitch inside, two and one. Well, a similar thing happened last year really to Kevin Euclid, but I think a lot. And that could be pointed to a lot of injuries that he had in the second half of the year last year. So many guys were going down. He was playing hurt a lot of the second half last season. Swing and a miss. And it's two and two. Birkin certainly not an overpowering left hander. Relies on his off speed pitches. Striking out. First strike out for Birkins. First out here in the bottom of the fifth. Looked like a little bit of a cut fastball that time from Birkins at about 88 miles an hour. Gets in on Kevin Euclid. Right underneath the hands. Here's Big Poppy who homered in the first inning. Got it into a fielder's choice in the third. One for two tonight. Home run number 26 of the season. It came off Radimus Lives. And the time with the Red Sox on top, one to nothing. Framed by Hernandez, but called the ball. And the count one and one. Sends a foul to the left. And the sky box is one and two. Perkins <laughs> last year as a rookie appeared in 35 games with the Orioles, one of the DL on his first. With an elbow problem this the rest of the season. Hits or twos. That get Poppy on the side, perhaps. Woodbury, we'll see. And it looked like right in the chest on him as he kind of opened up as that ball was coming inside. Tries to go inside with the fastball. Ortiz opens up and, yeah, right up the side. Waves off the trainer, waves off Francona, says he's okay, and makes his way down to first base. Euclid's hit tonight. Now Ortiz hit. Neither one intentional. Fourth time Big Pop has been hit this season. <laughs> so first and second, one down. And Mike Moore the batter. Right single to left in the first inning. Struck out swinging in the third inning. Outside, that's one and oh. That single back in the first inning for Lowell kept the hitting streak alive now at 13 games. That's 
side 2 and 0. Red Sox need a clutch hit here with a runner in scoring position. Tough time of it. Just 11 games got it off very well. Not about against the White Sox, but over the last four games, three of them coming against the Yankees at tough numbers. Now Mike Lowe's been one of the best this year in the Red Sox, 362, six best in the league with runners in scoring position. One for seven tonight. As the pitch misses for ball three, three and oh. Brooklyn shaking his head. CB Buckner didn't give him the benefit of the doubt that time. There's a strike three and one. Two waiting on deck, one up. Pedroia at second, Ortiz at first. Whoa, rattles it to left. Hayton won't get there. One hops the wall. Around from second comes Pedroia. Throw goes to second. It's a one run game. Four to three now. Orioles. Red Sox get a run back. Well, Lowe continues to hit with runners in scoring position. We gave the average coming into that at bat at 362. A line shot that gets by Peyton. Peyton makes a smart play getting this ball into second base. That keeps a double play in order in this inning. Lowell picks up his 94th RBI of the season. Ties him with Victor Martinez and Torrey Hunter for fifth in the league. Don Treblehorn back on the mound again. The acting manager at the moment, the bench coach for the Baltimore Orioles. Trembley ejected from tonight's game. The Red Sox Player of the Week is brought to you by your Kia dealers. This week it's Mike Cole. Last seven games coming into tonight. 452. Seven RBIs and two doubles. He's continued it tonight with two more hits. The Red Sox Player of the Week from your Kia dealers. It's Mike Lowell. Well, two hits tonight, 13 game hitting streak, 458. And Kelty takes strike one from Perkins. Up behind low, but starts off ahead of Kelty. So he's fouled back into the seats, 0 and 2. Action in the Red Sox pen after Javier Lopez has gone the last inning in two thirds. It's Mike Timlin. Snyder had been up last inning, but did not come in. Lopez enjoying a 1 2 3 top half of the fifth. We've got Marquecas, Tejada, and Millar in succession. Well, since Kelty has joined the Red Sox against left handed pitchers, he's 4 for 11. Quickly to his right, the second for one on the first. A big double play for the Orioles that concludes the inning. The Red Sox get a run back, but they trail 4-3 at the end of five. Fly Southwest Airlines' new nonstop service from Manchester to Phoenix for just $129 one way. You are now free to move about the country. The more business you do with your bank, the more you deserve a little VIP treatment, right? With Premier Checking from Sovereign Bank, you'll get special preferred higher rates on CDs and money market savings accounts, plus lower rates on home equity loans. And you can use any bank's ATMs at no charge. Premier checking from Sovereign Bank. We put more into it so you can get more out of it. 
Bob's Discount Furniture is proud to be the official furniture store of the New England Patriots. Go to any participating Bob's Discount Furniture and register to win a spot at Bob's Patriots home game party. Sunday, September 23rd at Gillette Stadium. Including seats for you and a guest to watch the Pats battle Buffalo. Four. You'll be Bob's guest at the pregame tailgate party. Food and drink included. Four. The first thousand entries at each store get a free Patriots t-shirt. How's that for more? Register today and get ready for all the fun and excitement. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's lots more, more. to come. It's the final days of Ford's model year clearance. It all ends September 3rd. Just announced, save big with 0% financing or up to 4507 cash back on F-150. It's your last chance to save big on America's best-selling truck. Visit your local Ford store or go to NewEnglandFord.com and enter for your chance to win four tickets to the September 16th race in Loudoun, New Hampshire. Ford's model year clearance ends September 3rd. Don't miss out. Aubrey Huff leads it off in the top half of the sixth inning. It's four to three. The Orioles on top. Red Sox get a run in the bottom of the fifth. And Birkins and the Orioles getting a big double play. We're in the fifth inning, started by Brian Roberts. Aubrey Huff's one for two, a single his last time up. Came around to score the fourth Orioles run of the night. Center field to base hit. And Aubrey Huff two for three tonight. Nice double play turned over by the Orioles to end last inning. Mike Lowell going in hard at second base. A good hard clean slide and it's going to make uh, Tejada leave his feet right there and still makes a good throw to first base to get the double play. So Roberts Tejada, nice combination with Lowell right on top of Tejada. And Terry Francona takes the baseball from Javier Lopez. As Aubrey Hutt for the single to begin the inning, and Mike Chimlin will make his way in. 1,000th career appearance for Mike Chimlin. Total attained by only 12 pitchers previously in Major League history. And Fenway will stand as one. Send it to Tom Karen, TC. Well down our New England Toyota dealer game break. Carlos Pena already with two homers on the night. One off Philip Hughes, one off Chris Britton. It is a 6-1 lead for the Tampa Bay Double Rays. The Yankees just two hits so far off Andy Sonnenstein. So the Yankees are trailing. We'll go back to Fedway Park as Mike Timlin takes them out. Send you back to Don and Jerry in just a moment. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? Be your own boss. Set your own hours. We gave up our jobs. People thought we were crazy. But it's to Chicago Midway, so you can always catch a later flight. And you can count on us to get you there with our convenient non-stop flights and on-time service. Freedom move about the country. Dunkin' Donuts knows it's not easy being a regular, everyday working guy. To prove it, we tried this experiment with hip hop star Jermaine Dupree. Do I get a ticket or something? Nah, we ain't got no ticket. Made for the regular, everyday folks. The tasty new Bacon Lovers Supreme Omelet. America runs on Dunkin'. Stop by Dunkin' Donuts for a chance to win great football prizes. Buy any breakfast sandwich to enter. Bob, Bob, the hero of the day. Stick with Bob and you get more. We want more! Bob saves you money all the way. More than any other store. More, more! The lowest price and quality you trusted. 
when Bob takes the field, the competition's busted shop. Bob's Discount Furniture, the Patriots Official Furniture Store. Back at Fenway Park, it's 4-3, to three, Orioles on top with nobody out. Aubrey Huff at first base, Mike Timlin into the game, Melvin Mora the batter. And there's ball one from Timlin in his 1,000th appearance. And we'll take a look at his career numbers uh, for Mike Timlin. 70 and 69, 140 saves. 39th appearance this year for the Red Sox. Nice ovation from this Fenway crowd recognizing this uh, feat by Timlin. How good has he been since the All Star break? His earned run average is 0.87 since the break. Two earned runs in 20 and two thirds innings. Second lowest among all major league pitchers behind only Brian Wolf of the Toronto Blue Jays. 0.83 earned run average for Wolf. As I mentioned, he came in. Total tamed by only 12 pitchers previously in Major League history, 1,000 appearances. That was on top of that list. Jesse Orozco. From 1979 through 2003, appeared in 1,252 games. And the next guy he jumps over would be Goose Gossage, who was 12th on the list with 1,002. And the left field, a base hit, ringing single from Mora as Hop moves up to second base. And first two are on here for the Orioles in the sixth inning. Here is the fullest and then he joins 1,000 or better. I mentioned Orozco on top. Dennis Eckersley on that list as well. Lee Smith. What a pretty impressive list. Mike Jackson surprises me a little bit. 1986 through 2004. Mike Jackson. 1,005 total for Mike Jackson. Back of course 1975 through 1998 1071 appearances for Dennis Eckersley. Two on nobody out and Ramon Hernandez the batters one for two is RBI single in the fourth inning. Was doing all their damage in the fourth, but certainly threatening for more here They're in the top half of the sixth. Back-to-back -back base hits. They get three in a row. Long drive base hit to left field, and all of a sudden Baltimore has got the bases loaded, nobody out, and taking no chances with nobody out. They'll hold that runner Aubrey Huff at third base. The potential here for a very big inning for the Orioles. Fastball middle in top spin line drive by Hernandez. He's got two hits in the ball game tonight. So offensively the Orioles don't look like a team that's on a long losing streak right now. Three straight hits to begin the top half of the sixth inning and here's Jay Payton. First pitch from Timlin. He sends it foul to the screen. And he doubled in the third inning. Reached out a fielder's choice in the fourth inning. One for two. He's not have a hit in his career against Mike Timlin. Towards right center field. Kelty making his way in. Makes the catch and trying it from third base is Hop. He slowed down and is safe. Gets in with the fifth Baltimore run. He appeared to hesitate between third and the plate just for a split second and then came forward and he just does get in as the Orioles take a two run lead once again. Yeah, it's almost like he wasn't sure he was going to make it and he hesitated, almost thinking about going back to third base. And then he gets in with a head for a slide. There's the tag by Huff. Now see him look back and he's wondering now, can I make it or not? He decides to go and he does make it with the head for a slide by the tag of Kevin Cash. 
And on the sacrifice fly to right tagging up moving to third was Melvin Mora. So it's first and third now with one down a run in for the Orioles. Roberts takes ball one from Timlin. Roberts is grounded out the short fly to center reached on a fielder's choice. Side two and zero. Oh. So the run is charged to Javier Lopez. He goes an inning and two thirds, giving up a hit and a run. Didn't walk anybody, nor did he strike anybody out. Three and zero. Oh. Have had more success with runners in scoring position tonight. There's a strike. Robert style was high for ball four, but it's strike one. Billy Patterson waits on deck. One out here in the top of the sixth. There's strike two. Someone battling back to a full count. See if they send the runner at first base or Hernandez on the 3 2 count. So, grounded fouls, they did not over by the Red Sox dugout. Orioles with 10 hits. Not hitting the Red Sox 10 to 6, Tom Treblehorn. In charge at the moment. Dave Trembley ejected from tonight's game. As part of the four run rally. And in the fourth. 3 2. And then ball four and he walks Roberts. So this will reload the bases for the Orioles. Second walk given up by Red Sox pitching tonight. Francona telling his uh, middle infield that the ball hit hard, you go for a double play. If it's a slow roller where you can't get to, you've got to come home with it. Corey Patterson, 0 for 3 tonight, has grounded out three times. And that's a tough decision for a middle infielder because Patterson has very good speed. And the starter tonight, Tavares, only went three and a third innings. So the Red Sox into that bullpen very early in this one. Up last inning as Lopez was pitching and Snyder's back up again. There's a strike three and one. Pinsky on the move can make the running catch. Spins and fires back into the infield, tagging and scoring from third base is Mora. With his sixth Orioles run, and it's now six to three, but a nice running catch on the line drive as Hinsky makes the grab out in left center field for out number two. Yeah, he does. He makes a nice play. And this just ball hit hard by Patterson. It looked like it was going to be a gapper, but Hinsky gets there 
It is a sacrifice only one run but it could have been much more damaging than that. Two down runners at first and second. Two runs in here for the Orioles are in the top of the sixth. There's Nick Markakis, who's two for three. He has singled and doubled. He scored a run and flied out to the warning track in left field. On the ground on the first baseline foul. Sox are seven and four against the Orioles this season. They were 15 and three in the season series a year ago. What about domination. The Red Sox is certainly very one sided in that regard last season but seven and four this year. Pop up foul and it's 0 and 2. Back into the press level. Somebody must have made a catch there because the other guys are clapping. Down the more from the Hartford Current. A nice grab. Two. Our kick is the seventh batter here in the top half of the sixth inning for the O's. Towards the corner, back goes Kelty, and that ball is gone. A three run home run for Nick Markakis, his 16th of the year, and that opens things up here for the Orioles now on top, 9 to 3. Looked like a change up this time from a Mike Timlin that stayed up about Letta High. It is the change up. It stays above the belt and Mark is all over it for that three run home run. He's been powered up lately as that is 16 home runs now in the season and five of his last 11 hits have been for home runs. He's got a three hit night going tonight a single a double in the home run so he's a triple away from the cycle. 89 runs batted into the season now for Mark Tejada, eighth man to bat in the inning. And the Red Sox trailing nine to three. Look at the scoreboard in the left, Tampa Bay on top of the Yankees, six to one now as they've moved to the seventh. Toward center field. Crisp is headed back and Coco makes the catch, bangs into the wall, cannot hold on. It rattled out of the glove. Coco injured as he hit it full board, apparently face first, it looked like, or chest first as he grabs that first. Oh, you could hear that from all the way up here. Oh, Hardy hit that center field padding on that wall. Almost a spectacular catch by Coco Crisp, and I think just the contact with the wall caused the ball to pop out. And the glove hits the wall and bounces out. <laughs> Paul Wasad, the trainer, is going to go out to check on Coco Crisp right now, and the Red Sox are also going to make a pitching change. What an effort by the Red Sox center fielder. 
Yeah, he had it right into the glove and then jarred loose his contact made with the wall. And point to the chest area for Paul Asar to check out as he gets out there. Red Sox making the pitching change as Kyle Snyder makes his way in from the pen. Nice bid by Coco Crisp who stepped aside with a pitching change from Fenway. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? Be your own boss, set your own hours, and make great money. It's not as crazy as it sounds. Last year, I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part time. We gave up our jobs. <laughs> People thought we were crazy. <laughs> and we took in over a quarter of a million dollars in our first year. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. There are thousands of opportunities for you, full or part time. Live the lifestyle you've been dreaming of. The secret is in this success kit. To get yours, log on now. Next year, my goal is a half million dollars. I made $5,000 yesterday. We've made enough to spend winter in Hawaii. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now to get your success kit. What a team. What a lineup. What a month. It's a Sox September to remember on Nesson. Brought to you all month long by W.B. Mason's What a Bargain Store. A super clearance center with savings of up to 75%. Team with the best record in baseballs in the home stretch. And we've got all your September game action covered. Nesson, one nation, one network, one month left. Dunkin' Donuts musical montage from Fenway here in the top half of the sixth. It's been a five run Orioles inning so far. And it's Kevin Millar batting with the new pitcher on Kyle Snyder and the Orioles on top nine to three. Snyder pitched a third of an inning yesterday in Yankee Stadium against the Yankees, overall making his 42nd appearance of the season. Delta hot at second base, two down, the 1 0. 2 0. Rest of the numbers for Snyder 48 innings pitched, 41 hits allowed, and 34 strikeouts. There's a strike two and one. Timlin still responsible for Tejada who's at second base. Timlin charged with four of the five runs so far. I mentioned the numbers for Timlin in the second half. Just two earned runs in 20 and two thirds. But uh, so far touched for four runs including the three run home run by Nick Markakis. There's two and two now. Trimalar Coco staying into the game. Not a lot of choices right now for the Red Sox, but to certainly appear to be all right after Paul Asar checked on him in center field after his run in with the center field fence. Thank goodness for the padding out there in center field. There was a time here at Fenway Park where that center field wall was not padded. That was added, uh, I believe, after Freddie Lynn crashed into it. Held off. Almost made the catch too. That ball was in the kind of the webbing of the glove, but he couldn't close it and hold and squeeze it before hitting that wall. And of course, it just bounced out. That ball coming to boot? It did. Right yeah. by your right ear, I think. Did it? Yeah. But you're locked in. You're focused on the replay there. I wonder how close it came to hitting you because I was ducking to my left. I have no idea. It'll get a lot up here. It's the second of the year. 
in the dirt and it's a full count. I think Millar would have taken some sort of pleasure if it hit one of us coming up into the booth. I don't think so. I think no pleasure. Are you going to keep that and put it in your office? I don't know. Be a nice office piece. Have Millar sign it and put it in your office. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't want to come with a picture. <laughs> Take a picture with Millar with the ball and no, no interest. This one has popped up. Ruthless backpedaling into foul ground makes the catch that will end the inning. But a five run inning for the Orioles. It's nine to three Baltimore at the end of five and a half. Values on the Lexus you always wanted. But like summer, it won't last forever. The event. Now through September 4th. See your Lexus dealer. I am your idea, and I'm huge. Tab me. Bind me. Stack me. Send me round. I'm your big idea. You can't stop this. I'm your biggest idea. Enrico moves me, shows me, sends me. Leaves me behind, but never in a bind. It's the big time. I'm your big idea. Enrico's how we go and go and go. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? It's not as crazy as it sounds. I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home working part-time. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. Log on and get your success kit. I made $5,000 yesterday. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now. The first NASCAR stock car to reach 200 miles per hour. The first minivan. And now, Dodge introduces the industry's first lifetime powertrain warranty. It's the best warranty in the business, and no other car company matches it. So come check out the best lineup of Dodge vehicles ever with our exclusive lifetime warranty. Now, well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing for 72 months on Durango, Dakota, and Grand Caravan. Last half of the sixth inning, it's 9-3. to three. The Orioles on top now. They put a five spot on the board in the top half of the sixth. Well, it's Coco Chris who leads it off here in the bottom of the sixth. And wait for Kurt Birkins. The relief of Radimus Liz. Not just three plus innings. Birkins has been on since the fourth inning. And the pitch is strike one and two. John Leister up in the pen, a former Red Sox farmhand, right hander. To the count to Crisp. Wide into left center field, a base hit. Able to grab it as Patterson. Crisp will throw the brakes on and head back to first. Well, some bumps and bruises tonight for the Boston Red Sox. First of all, uh, J.D. Drew fouling a ball off his foot. He had to leave the game after that. Dustin Pedroia rolling his wrist over on a, a dive at second base, but he stayed in the game. David Ortiz getting hit in the chest. And then Coco Chris banging a chest first into that ball in center field. So it has been a uh, painful night on the scoreboard and on the field for the Red Sox. Kinski. Doubled in the second, walked in the fourth. On the ground to first base, Millar. The second for one, relay back to first, not in time. 
Kevin had a little trouble getting out of the glove initially. But they do get the force out of Chris at second base for the first out of the inning. Well, he had a couple of options, and I think the other option might have been the best one, tagging first base and then throwing the second to get Coco Chris. Once he could not get the ball out of his glove, uh, then they could not make the double play. Hinsky hustling down the line. And the Milano, they, he's right near the bag. So maybe one step to tag the bag, then get Coco Chris in a rundown. Well, one out, one on. And here's Julio Lugo. He's 0 for 2. He's fly to left and fouled out. It's 0 and 2. Kevin Cash waiting on deck. Red Sox trailing by six runs. The Orioles with five runs in the top half of this inning. Ran by Hernandez, but it's ball one, one and two. Perkins looking in to C.B. Buckner, the home plate umpire tonight. Left side, Mora will go to second for one. Going to be tough to double up Lugo, and they cannot. They do get the lead runner in Hinsky. Five to four in the fourth out, and there's two down in the inning. Coming up after the game, it's W.B. Mason Extra Innings in Granite City Electric Extra Innings Extra with John Karen, Dave McCarty, and Tina Sebastio. You see Terry Francona's live postgame press conference after the series opener. And all the highlights of the Bronx as the Yankees begin a three game series tonight with Tampa Bay. It's all right after the game in high definition on Nesson. The top of the eighth, and it's 7 to 1 Tampa Bay right now. Kevin Cash bats third time. He's 0 for 2. He's grounded out to third, bounced into a 6 4 3 double play. And swings and misses down 0 2. Has thrown 40 pitches since coming in. And his 1 2 is tap foul. He's done a pretty nice job, actually. Since coming in, he has given up one run. And has settled down the Red Sox offense after back to back runs allowed by Radimus Liz to begin the game. Look at the line for Birkin so far. Two and two to Cash. Top of the Red Sox order, Dustin Bedroya waits on deck. Got him to end the sixth inning. We played six, and it's nine to three, Baltimore. Hi, that's B summer in May means country fairs and harness racing throughout the state. Rides, rides, and more rides for the young at heart. Great food and family fun. Maine's fair season is your best value for the whole family. What are you waiting for? There's a country fair going on right now. Fair fun and live harness racing all week at the Windsor Fair, featuring Maine's finest two and three year olds. Harness racing, it's fun to the finish. Hi, I'm Alyssa Schumann, and this is Sadie. We'd like to invite you to our summer celebration sale. During our annual summer celebration sale, we'd like to pass on great savings on exciting new models like these. The economical 2007 Honda Civic or the 2007 Honda Accord. The brand new third generation 2007 Honda CRV. Come see the 2007 Honda Ridgeline. See us for us. 
Yes, class, but see us and save. It takes more than quality home furnishings to make a room look great. It takes an eye for design. Meet Allison Aramita, a professional interior designer and buyer for Dorsey Furniture. With over 20 years experience in the field, Allison seeks out the newest fashions and national design trends and puts them on display in over 30 beautifully decorated collections. So stop by and see what Allison and all of us here at Dorsey Furniture have on display for you. Professional designs with you in mind, only at Dorsey Furniture, Route 1A, Holden. It's my time already? Come. Who are these guys? Nickel and Dime. I got nickel and dime to death? Should have switched to reliable home phone service from Time Warner Cable. Shh. It could have saved a lot of money. <laughs> ha! I'm switching now. <sighs> Sorry, boss. Get digital phone for only $39.95 per month. Call 1-800-833-2253 today. Another great service delivered over Time Warner Cable's advanced fiber network. Back at Fenway Park, it is 9-3 now. The Orioles on top as we head to the top half of the seventh inning. Yeah, state champs of something. I don't know what. Kyle Snyder back out on the mound. With the final out of the sixth inning. And Millar to foul out to end the inning. Those ladies we just saw, Taunton softball champions, the state champs. So, congratulations to them. Taunton, Massachusetts, not far from my hometown of Somerset. Aubrey Huff has two hits, he's two for three. Set foul down the right field line, backing out of play, two and two. Well, you did a good deed, Don. You gave uh, the young lady next door the uh, baseball that Kevin Millar hit up here. I met her prior to the game. She's from the Dominican Republic, and she watches a lot of our games uh, from down in the Dominican. Very nice. Now she's on television. So she's got the baseball and she's got an autograph. Very nice guys. Quite colorful hair. <laughs> I like it. Three and two the count to Aubrey Huff. Side ball four. And Snyder walks up to begin things here in the seventh. Third walk given up by Red Sox pitching. Very Red Sox game that goes into extra innings. The Sox get a save. CVS Pharmacy will donate $500 to Children's Hospital. CVS Pharmacy is the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Lead runner on for the Orioles here in the seventh inning. It brings up Melvin Mora. Moore's got two hits. The Orioles are banged out. 12 hits in the game. And they're out hitting the Red Sox 12 to 7. Outside, 2 and 0. Oh. Red Sox only getting three and a third tonight. From Julian Tavares. He got into that bullpen early. Tavares gave up four runs in three and a third. Javier Lopez a run. Mike Timlin charged with four runs in his two thirds of an inning. And popped that foul back and out of play. Boston Red Sox baseball on Nesson is brought to you by Acura. Halloween now playing in theaters everywhere. 
and by Verizon. Melvin Mora batting with Aubrey Huff at first base. Nobody out. And a pop up sending Pedroia back on the short lawn and right. Wynn plays with it a tad, but he makes the catch for the first out of the inning. Refresh your summer with Dunkin' Donuts new iced tea and the Red Sox by entering the Dunkin' Donuts Refresh Your Summer Sweepstakes. Enter at Nesson.com today for your chance to win a VIP Fenway Park experience. The Duncan dugout is filled up tonight for this Red Sox Orioles game, the first game of this three game series. One away in the seventh, Huff at first, and Ramon Hernandez the batter. Swing and a miss. Hernandez fly to center in the third. He singled to center in the fourth inning. Single to left in the sixth. Strike on the outside corner, and it's quickly 0 and 2. Hernandez will look back at CB Buckner. Not over the last seven games has been roughed up eight earned runs in the last seven and two thirds innings pitch. Long and run in five of the seven games that he pitched in, allowing three home runs. There's three batters since coming into the game. The final out of last inning he walks up. Now pop out to Mora. One out, one on. And a one two to Hernandez. Breaking ball and a swing and a miss. Strikes out Hernandez for the second out of the inning. That's the good Kyle Snyder curveball right there to pick up the second out of the inning. The 12 to 6 curveball. Stayed inside, but still no contact from Hernandez. So two down, Huff who walked to begin the inning, still at first, and here's Jay Payton. Payton has doubled, reached on a fielder's choice, and had a sacrifice fly to pick up his 47th RBI of the season. Missed starting again at Fenway. Well, chopped down the third baseline, it'll go foul. And Peyton will be down 0 and 2 when he comes back. Sox are 16 and 12 in the month of August, during the last day of August. Fourth best winning percentage in the month of August. Red Sox last year in August were just 9 and 21. Now that was the longest month that I can remember around here in a long, long time. Red Sox were out of it, all kind of injuries, and really, you just couldn't wait for the thing to be over. Different situation, certainly this season. Some pretty good races now in, in baseball. Philadelphia, they're making a move on the Mets. Two behind them. Mets who had lost five in a row. The Phillies who had won five in a row. And this one back up the middle and into center field. A base hit for Jay Payton as Huff moves up to second base. 
A lot of guys with big nights tonight for the Orioles. Certainly Peyton with a couple of hits and a sacrifice fly. Hernandez two hits. Mora two hits. Tejada with the home run and a double. Three hits for Marquez. Curveball again this time away. That's actually a better curveball than the one he struck Hernandez out on. Nice hitting by Peyton. So first and second two down. And it's back up top for Brian Roberts. All the three divisions in the National League are going to have very good Septembers. So you got the Mets with a two game lead over Philly. Chicago with a two and a half game lead over Milwaukee only three over St. Louis now. And a one game spread out west as San Diego is one behind Arizona and the Dodgers four back. I mean, the divisions are up for grabs but what about the wild card situation you got like eight teams that are involved. Yeah, probably again that whole thing will go right down to the last day of the season. Looks a batter with the count of one and zero. He takes ball two, two and zero. And look at the teams that are involved right now at the moment in the wild card. And San Diego. Just a game back of Arizona in the West. And the Braves got hot for a while, but then they cooled off. This one on the ground to first base. Euclid will flip to the covering Snyder at the bag at first down the inning. Seventh inning stretch time from Fenway's 9 3 Orioles. Time now for Sports Jets Update with Hazel May. John, thank you. Hi, everybody. Breaking news for you. According to a report on ESPN.com, the NFL is set to suspend Patriots safety Rodney Harrison for admitting that he violated the league's drug policy. We'll hear from Harrison tonight on Sports Desk, presented by FW Webb, home of Frank Webb's Bass Centers. I'll see you all post game. Back to Don and Jerry after this short break in the action. How would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? It's not as crazy as it sounds. I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part time. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. Log on and get your success kit. I made $5,000 yesterday. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now. You know, folks, all natural honeydew fruit smoothies are a deliciously healthy way to beat the heat. We've got fantastic flavors like wild berry, pina colada, and banana that you can even add a little ice cream to. Either way, you'll have yourself a seventh inning taste sensation. So drop by participating honeydew shops and get one today. It's great. Check out honeydewtv.com for other great offers and enjoy the local flavor. Oh, oh that was a strike. The wait is over. Olympia Sports' biggest footwear sale of the year is happening right now. Buy one pair of brand name athletic footwear, get a second pair of equal or lesser value for only half price. This sale ends soon, so get it at Olympia Sports today. It's Sunday night. You know where your sports are? Every Sunday at 1125, turn to the network you turn to all week long. Nesson and the new sports desk lights out. Sundays on Nesson. Your sports weekend isn't over. Go to Tomorrow night at 6, live from Rem Dogs on Yawkey Way, Olympia Sports presents the Boston Globe pregame show with Tom Caron and Dave McCarty. They'll preview game two of this series as the sign up for the Red Sox will be announced after the game. Plus, highlights from around the majors, including the scene from the Bronx as the Yankees take on the Devil Rays. It's all tomorrow at 6 in high definition on Nesson. Well, we head to the last half of the seventh inning. It's nine to three. The Orioles are on top. A 13 hit attack so far for Baltimore. They got a new pitcher on. It's John Leicester. Just uh, come, coming up from uh, Triple A Norfolk on Thursday. The second time he's been up with the Orioles this season. Only two outings. Spent some time earlier this year on the disabled list and had to make some rehab appearances. Dustin Pedroia leading it off at the bottom of the seventh inning. Meister is on for Kurt Perkins, who went three innings of relief after the Orioles started tonight. Radimus Liz went three plus. Liz gave up two of the three runs the Red Sox have. Kurt Perkins in his three innings gave up three hits, a run, did not walk anybody, and struck out two. Did a pretty good job of keeping the Red Sox offense quiet. 
Pedroia down the right field line. It's curling foul. Dustin tonight struck out in the first. He doubled in the third inning, singled, and scored in the fifth. So a couple of hits tonight from the top spot. The Red Sox order. Nice to with previous major league experience with the Cubs. Playing in 42 games with Chicago between 2004 and 2005, a 5 and 3 record with a 4.80 ERA. Signed a minor league contract here with the Orioles last November. The center field, Patterson coming on the good speed, and the dive can't get it. It's by him. Fortunately, not too far by him as he ducks back to grab it, but Pedroia is in the second base with his third hit of the night. Now, Pedroia, who came into the game six for his last 31, now with a three for four night. I thought Patterson was going to get this ball. He plays pretty deep, but he got a very good jump on it, comes in, and it bounces between the glove and the grass. Tracks it down, but Pedroia stands at second base with a two base hit. It's the 11th three hit game of the year now for Dustin Pedroia. Who stands at second base with a double, his second double of the night. A three hit night. And here's Kevin Euclid. Well, the Red Sox with uh, nine outs left in this game hope to expose this bullpen of the Orioles, which has been a problem. To strike in the count one and one. You look at that Chicago series when the Red Sox, every time they got to that bullpen, just piled on runs. There's a strike to Euclid in the count one and two. And then, of course, the offense from Silent New York. And quiet again tonight. To left center. That's going to get in for a hit. Pedroia coming around. Who will score as Patterson bobbled it for a moment. Now Euclid's going back to the bag at first. The throw gets away. No further advance for Euclid. Red Sox get a run. It's down 9 to 4 Baltimore. Euclid jumps on the curveball. And he picks up his first hit of the night. RBI number 72 on the season. Ball juggled around in the outfield. Euclid was heading towards second base, but put the brakes on. So Euclid at first base, nobody ought to run in. And here's David Ortiz. You know, a solo home run back in the first inning. And it takes ball one from Leicester. More action in the Orioles pen. Jamie Walker, a left-hander, is up. Seems like every game the Orioles play, you see Walker and Bradley. Taken all the way, and he takes ball four. So two hits and a walk so far, allowed by Leicester since coming in. But is only ready to go to the mound. The pitching coach and he'll make his way out there. As the Red Sox have gotten run so far, still nobody out.
first and second a run in. With nobody out here. Red Sox trying to climb back into this one. They trail nine to three. It's now nine to four. And here's Lowell with runners at first and second. Strike over the inside corner and it's 0 and 1. To left field, Jay Payton shy of the track to make the catch for the first out of the inning. Well, there is just the first out back to second goes Euclid Ortiz to first. And here comes Tom Treblehorn who will make the pitching change now as Leicester finally gets it out and he'll be coming out of the game. Hazel May I made mention of something at uh, the sports desk update and we want to pass along some further news some shocking news tonight out of. Foxborough, New England Patriots strong safety Rodney Harrison will be suspended by the NFL for four games as he admitted to league officials that he had used human growth hormone, so HGH violation, and he has been suspended for four games. Certainly a setback for the Patriots. Pitching change from Fenway, it's 9 to 4 Orioles. Do you need a home loan? Let us help you today. Here at the National Mortgage Center, you are our valued customer. Imagine having up to three banks competing for your business. It's true. I made one fast and easy phone call, I was approved, and I received three great offers to refinance my home. Homeowners, wouldn't you prefer the banks competing for your business? Call this number right now and receive up to three free quotes for your home loan needs. I was dangerously in debt. My credit was in the low 500s. But after one quick phone call, I was approved for three life-changing offers. And now I'm debt free. Cash in today. Get money for debt consolidation, home improvements, even vacations. Our banks have the lowest rates in the industry. Poor credit? No problem. Call our loan hotline today and receive up to three free quotes. It's that easy. The National Mortgage Center helped me. They can help you too. All homeowners are approved for up to three free quotes. So call our 24 hour loan hotline now. Charlie Moore. Knows a lot about fishing. That's a speckled rainbow thingamajoozy. Charlie Moore, a show about fishing. We have flavor for sure. And usually it's based upon me being completely insane. Charlie Moore, he's completely insane. Ah! Ah! This summer, catch all new episodes with a mad fisherman every Sunday, all summer long. It's the Charlie Moore Summer of Fun on SN, brought to you by Overshawn Hardware. Right after the game, it's W.B. Mason extra innings with Tom Karen, Dave McCarty, and Tina Sebastio. You hear Julian Tavares' postgame comments and his performance tonight, plus highlights from all the action around the majors on this Friday night in baseball. It's all after the game in high def on Nesson. Here, Jamie Walker into the game with the Orioles on top nine, four, one out, runners at first and second. Among the league leaders in appearances, this is number 70 on the season for Walker. As a matter of fact, 70 leads the American League. Vizcaino is next with 68. So we're going to miss, and it's two and one. Lee Kelty has been in the game since the third inning with J.D. Drew left, throwing a pitch off the top of his foot. And did not return. Kelty striking out in the third, running into a full six three double play in the fifth. Nicholas at second base, Ortiz at first. Strikes out. So Walker makes quick work with Bobby Kelty for the second out of the inning. Quite a few changeups from Walker against Kelty there. A changeup up and away for the strikeout. So a promising beginning to the inning. But a couple of quick outs. 
Line ball out by Mike Lowell. I should say line drive out by Lowell. And now the strike out to Kelty. Two down first and second. And here's Coco Crisp. He's been on base three times tonight. He has walked twice and single to center. Seeing plenty of change ups here from Jamie Walker. Who's falling off toward third base? It becomes a foot race, and Coco Chris will beat it. He couldn't find first base. That's a tough angle. You see the shuffle pass by Millar, but the pitcher who has to look back is trying to find the baseball in the bag at the same time. 16 infield hits for Chris, but tops on the team. Chris been on base four times tonight. Two walks, two singles. Sox have them loaded with two down. They've gotten a run in this inning. Lucas at third, Ortiz at second, and Crisp at first. Okinski has doubled, walked, and granted into a fitter's choice. Okinski takes ball one. Action in the Orioles pen, Chad Bradford. He fouls it off one and one. He's at second and third. The responsibility of John Leister went a third of an inning. So far, he's been charged with a run. I think we have an injury uh, as they come out to check on uh, Jamie Walker. He seems to say he's okay. They're pointing toward his hip. What is hanging out of the back of Treblehorn's pants? Something just fell off. Padding gloves or something? Oh, he did limp after that. Yeah, he did. After that delivery, you could see him limp off the mound. I think they set up Treblehorn. I really do. They, they put something in on his pants when he went out to the mound. Linsky looks a fly ball down the right field line. Long run for Roberts over by the seats, and he leans in to make the catch. No, he's pulled away from him. And uh, Roberts leaning in. Once you land in, all bets are off. Looks like he was robbed there as he leaned in and had it kind of pulled away. Yeah, if they reach over, it's interference. If you go into the stands, and it's fair game. Did drop the ball, and uh, after that, Kevin Millar, I guess, uh, congratulating a fan. I don't know. Crowd cheering as Veritek makes his way in from right field in the bullpen. And as Veritek coming in. One, two. Winsky looks a foul ball to right field. Our kick is going to back now. He's going to come in, and it's going to fall for a hit. 
From third comes Euclid. Ortiz behind him. Two more runs in, and it's now nine to six. Bad read from Arcakis and right initially didn't break, and it falls in. Well, the Orioles close to getting out of this inning. The Roberts play as he goes to the stands, reaches in, does not make the catch. And he won an interference call, but I think that was the correct call, a bad jump, a late jump here by Mike Hagis, and that ball drops in and two runs come in. I already had that written down as an F9. And out comes Trouble Horn again. So the runs are charged to Leicester as Walker, after striking out Kelty, hits for Crispin Hansky. And the Red Sox back within three. Bradford will make his way on. Stay tuned for an exciting money making opportunity from SMC. Would you like to make more money, set your own hours, and spend more time with your family? Well, now you can with SMC. It's amazing, I mean, to go to the mailbox and you get $10,000, $50,000 checks. I was buried in debt, and I was sitting around one day and I saw an SMC commercial. I felt confident that this would work. My best year gross, I did about $350,000. I was making more money than I ever made in my life. SMC supports its members with a huge warehouse stocked with thousands of products that you can sell for profits of up to 300% and more. Call right now to request your free information packet. And remember to ask your operator how you can jumpstart your business with $100 worth of free SMC merchandise. Just pick up the phone and call this toll-free number now. Remember, you have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. Call 800-708-2826. Back at Fenway, 9-6. The Orioles on top. Red Sox getting three runs back so far here in the bottom of the seventh inning. And a pitching change for the Orioles. They bring on Chad Bradford. Well, Chad Bradford also very busy. 67th appearance for him on the season. 52 and two-thirds. 66 hits allowed. 12 walks and 27 strikeouts. He is not allowed a home run on the season. The pit sequence is brought to you by Commonwealth Health Connector. Cubby of bases connect to health. Lefty against lefty, missing with the breaking ball down and away. Minsky fouls off the fastball. And this is the ball that uh, Roberts uh, could not catch as he reaches into the stands. And then in a breaking ball, the Blue base hit. Looks like it was going to be the end of the inning. Marquez got a bad jump. Red Sox get two runs. Well, the Orioles bullpen, 64 runs allowed in the last 36 and two thirds, part of this uh, nine-game losing streak that they have had. And uh, the runs this inning so far charged to John Leister gives up three in a third of an inning. Walker responsible now for the runners at first and third as Bradford comes in. Lugo will be the batter. Julio, the eighth member of the Red Sox, to bat here in the bottom of the seventh. Pretty good night tonight for Eric Pinsky, who's just driven in two more runs. He has got two hits and three RBIs. He stands at first base now, crisp at third. Think about it, Don. Those are the kind of things that that happen to teams that are on losing streaks. I mean, you're inches away from being out of the inning with the Roberts play. You should have a fly ball out, really, but Marquez gets a terrible jump on it. Ball drops in. Innings alive. It's now a three-run ball game. We have found new ways to lose games. This one is chopped at third. Mora throws to first base and yeah, that'll end the inning but an inning in which the Red Sox score three times now nine to six Baltimore at the end of seven. OK people let's gather around gather around if you would please let's bring it in and listen up. Yeah let's powwow. This is team communication week. I want you to think about what that means. You do your job so I can do my job. There's an exciting sound in travel. 
Southwest Airlines Ding. Get exclusive low fares sent directly to your desktop. Deals that are only available for a limited time and only by downloading Ding at Southwest.com. You are now free to move about the country. Attention, all Medicare beneficiaries who need assistance getting around their homes. There is a Medicare benefit that may qualify you for a new power chair or scooter at little to no cost to you. Imagine one scooter or power chair that could improve your mobility and your life. One Medicare benefit that, with private insurance, may entitle you to pay little to nothing to own it. One company that can make it all happen. Your power chair will be paid in full. The Scooter Store. Hi, I'm Dan Weston. We're experts at getting you the scooter or power chair you need. In fact, if we pre-qualify you for Medicare reimbursement and Medicare denies your claim, we'll give you your new power chair or scooter free. I didn't pay a penny out of pocket for my power chair. With help from the Scooter Store, Medicare and my insurance covered it all. Call the Scooter Store for free information today. Call 800-461-9487 for free information. That number again is 800-461-9487. <laughs> taste as big as Canada. Molson Canadian. Here's to good nature. Well, if the Red Sox are able to come back and win this game, two big plays will remember from the seventh inning. Now, first of all, a fly ball that's in the stands. Roberts can't handle it. As a fan helps knock the ball out of his glove. And then uh, a fly ball that looks like it was going to be a routine F9. Instead, it drops in after the bad jump by Mike Kakis. And the Red Sox get uh, three total in the inning. So it's on to the top half of the eighth inning. And it's Corey Patterson, Nick Marcakis, and Miguel Tejada. This is the new Red Sox pitcher as Manny Del Carmen is in to face Patterson. Takes over for Kyle Snyder. Del Carmen making his 32nd appearance. He has 31 strikeouts and 31 in the third innings. His last outing coming against the Yankees on the 28th. Inning in the third in that game, one hit, no runs, did have a strikeout. One hopper picked by Pedroia for the first out. Put it off to the side, and there's one away. Yeah, I don't think you have a choice when the ball's hit that hard. <laughs> Don't have time to take a step to get in front of it. There's a bullet right there, and that Pedroia off to his left, and an easy out at first base on the one bounce. So one down, and it brings up Nick Markakis. Three hits in the game: a single, a double, and a home run. He's also fly to left. Strike to Marcakis. Both teams in double figures in hits as the Red Sox have 11, the Orioles with 13. Orioles had a 9 3 advantage. Red Sox into that Orioles pen. Score three times in the bottom of the seventh. It away and it's three and one. Now the Yankees have lost that game tonight, nine to one to Tampa Bay. Don, I'm sorry to say that your Mariners lost seven to five. The Tigers have fallen on kind of some rough times lately. They're starting pitching, which was the key for them. Last year has not been very good lately this year. Yeah, that's the surprising thing about Detroit. They're pitching just ahead of the Baltimore Orioles, 11th in the league. And that 
matched up against the Oakland A's tonight, playing out west. Close so foul, still three and two. Pitches up. That change has become very effective for him, and then he buzzed that fastball inside by Mark Hagis. Two down for Miguel Tejada. League leaders are brought to you by Olympia Sports. Home runs during the month of August has been the last day of August. Tejada tied with Magli Ordonez, both with 10. And Carmen quickly behind, 2 0. Oh. Tejada hit a two run shot in the fourth inning, his 17th home run of the year. Three, three and oh. Four pitch walk to Tejada down to first base with two outs. It was the fourth walk given up by Red Sox pitching tonight. It's really been two big innings for the Orioles. The fourth when they had the two run home run from Tejada, and of course the sixth when they had the three run home run from Marquez. Four runs in the fourth, five runs in the sixth. Here's Millar, who is 0 for 3 with a walk, who scored a run after walking in the fourth inning. Sox have used Tavares tonight. He went three and a third, giving up four runs. Javier Lopez, inning in two thirds, giving up a run. Timlin, two thirds of an inning, giving up four runs. Kyle Snyder, an inning and a third, not giving up a run. And now Doug Harmon has two outs in the eighth. Center playable for Coco Crisp. Makes the catch to end the top of the eighth. We head to the bottom of the eighth. It's nine to six, Baltimore. It's Toyota's Lots on the Lot clearance event. With so many great models to choose from, it's the right time to buy. Now that it's time to clear the lots, you could save with the first ever cash back offer on an 07 Camry, $500. Camry, Motor Trans 2007 Car of the Year. Toyota's Lots on the Lot clearance event ends September 4th. See your New England Toyota dealer now. When it comes to repairs, VIP always tells you up front what's wrong, when it'll be fixed, and we'll do it for less. At VIP, we shoot straight, always. We'll never leave you in the dark. Our qualified techs will tell you what your car needs and what it doesn't in plain English. Our full one-year nationwide warranty on parts and labor means we stand behind everything we do. And we'll always let you know exactly when your repairs will be done. When you need service, head to VIP. A little love goes a long way. 
Did you know you can start your own business for less than $25? It's a proven system that has worked for people for over 50 years. This past year, I did $250,000 in sales. SMC has a huge warehouse with thousands of fast-selling products. As a member, you can order any item at rock bottom prices and sell for profit at up to 300%. No sales experience needed, and you can start part time or full time. Start towards a better future today. Call now to get free information. Revive yourself at Cumberland Farms with new Diet Pepsi Max, an invigorating cola with zero calories. Back at Fenway Park, the Orioles have a 9-6 lead here in the eighth. The fan has run onto the field. Yes. Uh. Well, we have a moment. Let's send it back to Nesson and Tom Karen. TC. Thank you, Don. Minnesota, Kansas City. Scott Baker had a perfect game into the ninth inning. A leadoff walk to John Buck was the end of the perfect game, and then Mike Sweeney, a one-out single. So the no-hit bit is gone for Scott Baker. Minnesota leading the game 5-0. Second game of a doubleheader, guys. Okay, Tom, thank you very much. Back here at Fenway, 9-6. Orioles on top last half of the eighth inning. Chad Bradford still in the game. And it's going to be Jason Veritek is going to pinch hit here for Kevin Cash to begin the inning. And have run onto the field in between innings. And that was, that was a mistake. <laughs> Back to the mound. Bradford. One pitch, one out at the bottom of the eighth. Justin Bedroya coming up. Struck out in the first, doubled in the third, singled in the fifth, and doubled in the seventh. Three hits tonight from the top spot in the Red Sox order. As a team of 11 hits. Inside ball one, one and one. Bruce Whitting on deck, Red Sox batting last of the eight. By the dive, Robertson in the center field. Fourth hit of the night for Dustin Bedroya, one out single. Two singles, two doubles tonight from Pedroia. He has certainly done his job as a leadoff man. Ball hit hard, the dive by Roberts. He can't come up with it. Pedroia, four for five. One out, one on, and Kevin Euclid the batter. Euclid's been a boy twice tonight, hit by a pitcher and singled. He's also driven in the run. Now 72 RBIs on the season. And he gets hit again. Second time tonight. Uh, Euclid has been target practice over the last couple of days. And again, that's the last thing Bradford wants to do. That brings uh, the potential tying run of the plate and David Ortiz. This was earlier in the ball game, back in the third inning. And now Bradford 
Gets him here in the eighth inning. And that quickly, the Red Sox have the tying run, and David Ortiz coming to home plate. Duke is all beat up tonight. Well at second, the Euclid's at first, one down. Ortiz takes ball one. The numbers on David Ortiz like eighth inning or later. The chance just like this, hitting a 208. And the Orioles get the infield shift on. Right rain falling at Fenway. <laughs> Ortiz drills it but foul. As I mentioned, when Bradford came into the game, he has not allowed a home run on the season, and that's what David Ortiz is trying to do right now, get the first off him. The draw at second, Euclid's at first, one down, last to the eighth. Back to the mound. To second for one on to first, an enormous double play. Bradford turns it, and the Red Sox are gone in the eighth. Big Poppy denied again. Nine to six Orioles. I win. I'm a winner. There's a better place to play. I'm a winner. Foxwoods Resort Casino, home of the only poker room in New England. Check out the action at foxwoods.com. Your inspiration. Your support system. Your rock. Your brothers. Your sidekick. Your foundation. Your reflection, your crew, your future. Whatever your reason, drink responsibly. When you're on the go, you need the convenience, quality, and pricing you'll always find at Extra Mart. Extra Mart is proud to be your headquarters for the 147th Annual Woodstock Fair in Woodstock, Connecticut, this Labor Day weekend, August 31st through September 3rd. The Woodstock Fair features over 48 acres of rides and exhibits, great food and top-notch entertainment, including Trick Pony, The Bangles, The Cherry Pop and Daddies, Quiet Riot, Jordan Knight, and Josh Grayson. Save $10 by getting your advanced admission and ride tickets at participating Extra Mart stores. Tickets are going fast, so get yours today. That's Rusty Wallace, amazing driver. He's also my uh, third cousin once removed. That's his brother, Mike Wallace, driver of the Geico Chevrolet. I can see why Geico sponsors Mike. And when he does well, people will think about saving money on car insurance. Whereas if I were driving that car, all they could think about is, there goes Lauren Wallace, greatest thing that ever climbed into a race car. Poor fella. He has no idea. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The ninth inning back at Fenway, Manny Del Carmen back in for the Red Sox. He pitched the eighth. He is on for the ninth. At least to begin it. Rain falling at Fenway Park. Jason Veritek after pinch hitting for Kevin Cash takes over for him behind the plate. High fly ball up towards right field and Kelty. Makes the catch. Sunday night at 11:25. You won't want to miss Sports Desk Lights Out, presented by FW Webb. You'll see exclusive Nesson conversations with two of New England's biggest sports newsmakers. Hazel May sits with Tiger Woods and Catherine Tappan talks to Teddy Bruschi. Catch the special Tiger and Teddy edition of Sports Desk Lights Out Sunday night at 11:25. One down for Melvin Mora. Oh, 
two hits and an RBI tonight, both singles to left field. He scored a run. And an inside ball one. So Carmen worked the eighth. He walked to Hata but retired everybody else. He faced in the eighth inning. And pitch inside makes it 2 and 0, oh, missing at 95. And 20 pitches since coming in. And Sox deep into their bullpen tonight. And coming down here, kind of a driving rain with the wind at the moment, but a light rain. Rio to Mora. Outside ball four, four pitch walk, second walk given up by Del Carmen. Stay tuned after the game for Granite City Electric Extra Innings Extra with John Karen and Dave McCarney and Gina Sebastio, who will bring you the view for the manager on tonight's series opener and Terry's take. That's just part of our complete post game reaction from the Red Sox Clubhouse following tonight's game. It's all after the game in high definition, and it's only on Nesson. His pen is busy. Danny Baez up for the Orioles. Here comes Terry Francona to the mound after the walk. And he's going to take the baseball from Manny Del Carmen. So a pitching change here in the top of the ninth with one out. The Red Sox will employ their sixth pitch of the night as Papelbon will come into the game. Would you like to run a business of your own from the comfort of your own home? Be your own boss, set your own hours, and make great money. It's not as crazy as it sounds. Last year, I made over $100,000 a year from my home. I just made a down payment for our vacation home, working part time. We gave up our jobs. <laughs> People thought we were crazy. <laughs> and we took in over a quarter of a million dollars in our first year. Yeah, you have to be crazy to visit this website and find out how to start your home business. Crazy like a fox. There are thousands of opportunities for you, full or part-time. Live the lifestyle you've been dreaming of. The secret is in this success kit. To get yours, log on now. Next year, my goal is a half million dollars. I made $5,000 yesterday. We've made enough to spend winter in Hawaii. Crazy? I don't think so. Log on now to get your success kit. Back at Fenway Park with this game summary is brought to you by a local Lincoln Mercury dealers. David Ortiz got the Red Sox off to the fast start in the bottom of the first with two outs. He would hit his 26th home run of the year to give the Red Sox a 1-0 advantage. But the Orioles came back in a big way. A four-run fourth inning. They would add to it in the sixth as Nick Markakis with a three-run shot off Mike Timlin. They scored five times in the sixth inning. Hinsky and the Red Sox battled back with three in the seventh inning. As Eric Hinsky drives in a pair with a single to right field, scoring two to make it nine to six. And that's where we stand here in the ninth inning, top of with one out. And he need to get some work tonight. The Red Sox deep into their bullpen. They bring on Jonathan Papelbon. Yeah, two things. You know, they want to keep this a three-run ball game and give him a shot going into the bottom of the ninth. And also the fact that Don mentioned he has not worked in a long time. He was back in Chicago on the 26th, pitched an inning in that game and had three strikeouts. Comes in after Manny Del Carmen went an inning in a third, walking two. Melvin Mora was the second of the two walks. He stands at first base with one out here in the ninth. Ramon Hernandez is two for four in the game tonight with an RBI. Hernandez hit at the first pitch. 
some rush showing here. We mentioned how long it's been since Papa Bond's been in a game. First pitch too far inside. And Hernandez gets plucked. Two on, one away. And Jay Payton, the batter. There have been a lot of hit batters in this game, and in my opinion, none of them have been intentional. I was just going to ask you that. Yuka was hit twice tonight. You think in any way retaliatory type situation? Not when you're down, down by three runs. It's inside ball one. Last thing you want is more base runners right now. You want to keep this a three run game. Take a chance in the bottom of the ninth. Field line on the move is Kelty over by the seats, and he won't have a play. <laughs> Two on, one away, top of the ninth. Looking to the bottom of the ninth inning, Baez warming in the Orioles' pen. Mike Wall, Bobby Kelty, and Kirk Will Chris would be the expected batters. Applebaum trying to keep it a three run deficit. One of those at second, and this one fouled off. As Moore got a jump, Hernandez did not leave first. As a trail runner, you've got to keep your eye on that guy in front of you if he has ability to steal bases. If he goes, you have to go. Obviously, Mora there running on his own. Felt like he could get a good jump on Papelbon, which he did. He had the walking and running lead. It would have been no problem to steal that base. <laughs> One, two to Peyton. Up down the first baseline, foul ground. Euclid runs out of room. Two teams have combined now for 25 hits in the game. 13 for the Orioles, 12 for the Red Sox. Peyton's got two of those hits from the number nine spot in their order. Tried to hold up, but went around. Two down. First strike back for Papa Bond. Papa Bond picks up his 72nd strikeout in 47 innings. As Peyton can't pull, stay off that high fastball. So two down, more at second. Hernandez at first, and Brian Roberts the batter. Roberts does not have a hit. Will be 13 hits the Orioles have tonight. He did walk in the sixth. Struck out nine of the last 11 batters that he has faced. Coming into the game, 71 strikeouts in 46 and two thirds innings. Works out to about 13 plus K's every nine innings. Best among major league pitchers. 
He's had left handed hitters hitless in the last 24 bats against him. Ball two, two and one. Corey Patterson, two outs, more at second base. Hernandez at first. In the dirt. Ante keeps it in front of him. No advance for the base runners. Three and one. Little problem controlling the splitter right now for Papelbon, bouncing it a couple of times to uh, Roberts. Like doing a terrific job blocking that pitch. That's nine appearances for Papelbon. 17 strikeouts, one hit allowed. And scoreless innings. Seven saves mixed in there. Right on here, the Red Sox trailing by three runs. A three run pitch to Roberts. Nice foul, full count. Jay Payton, first and second, two down, top of the line. Brian Robertson and loads the bases now for the Orioles. Again, Papelbon trying to go with that splitter on the 3 2 count and again bouncing it. So it's more at third base. Hernandez at second base and Roberts at first with two down here in the top of the ninth. Patterson 0 for 4 with a sacrifice fly. It's a fly ball towards the gap in right center field. Crispin a long run. Coco going to make the catch. That had gap written all over it. But now we got Coco Crispin center field to run it down. 9 6 Orioles. We head to the bottom of the ninth. is over. Olympia Sports' biggest footwear sale of the year is happening right now. Buy one pair of brand name athletic footwear, get a second pair of equal or lesser value for only half price. This sale ends soon, so get it at Olympia Sports today. It's Toyota's Lots on the Lot clearance event. With so many great trucks to choose from, it's the right time to buy. Like Tundra, you could save with $3,000 cash back or 1.9% financing for 60 months or lease for just $2.99 a month for 36 months. Toyota's Lots on the Lot clearance event ends September 4th. See your New England Toyota dealer now. 
Baseball is really a neighborhood game. The feel at the local school, a sandlot, or even the backyard. And at Sovereign, the same is true for banking. Our roots are in the neighborhood and always will be. Which means even though Sovereign offers big banking resources, we never forget the value of small town attention. If you're in debt to the IRS for $10,000 or more, you don't have to take desperate measures to settle your account. All you have to do is put the right people to work for you. And that's as simple as calling this number. You'll speak to a tax expert who can help you negotiate a settlement that's significantly less than the actual amount you owe. They saved my business. I owed $30,000 and paid a fraction of it. Call this number and get your case settled for less. Now you only have a small window of time to settle. So act now. More inside analysis, more highlights, more exclusive interviews. So much more, we had to call it extra. WB Mason's Extra Innings and Granite City Electric's Extra Innings. 9-6, Orioles on top as we head to the last half of the night. Danny Baez, the new pitcher now for the Orioles. Here's a nominee for this week's Den Trophy Play of the Week, and Coco Chris gives the Red Sox a chance at least. It looked like that ball was going to get in a gap. Probably three runs would have scored. Instead, Coco tracks it down, and the Red Sox trail by three here in the bottom of the ninth. Tune in to the pregame show this Friday to see which play will win this week's Den Trophy Play of the Week. To left field in for a base hit for Mike Lowell. Gets away from Peyton for a moment, not far enough for Lowell to give it a try. But he's got his third hit of the night, opens up the bottom of the night. Three hits on the night, now a 326 batting average for Mike Lowell. More importantly, the leadoff man on here in the bottom of the ninth. Cora will pinch hit for Bobby Kelty. Which will make things very interesting if the Red Sox are able to tie this up. But that is to worry another day here. Currently trying to at least tie it up here in the bottom of the ninth. Well, I think you'd see Lugo go to the outfield and throw it a shortstop. Alex to right field for a base hit. Low up to second base. First two have reached in the ninth. Wins trouble here. Nobody up in the pen. Now, Baez has had trouble. I mean, this is uh, his 49th appearance. He's 0-5 on the season. He's got two saves. He blew one his last time out. And that quickly, two base runners for the Red Sox here in the ninth. Coco Chris with an interesting night as he uh, crashed against that wall. The ball popped out of his glove. And then of course uh, get the score at nine to six with this terrific play on Corey Patterson tracking it down heading toward the warning track. And now Coco up as the tying run here in the ninth inning. Been on base four times tonight two walks a single and an infield hit. Fly ball center field. Patterson headed back onto the track to make the catch for the first out. Lowell will tag and move from second to third base. With one out, Red Sox have runners at the corners now. Now Eric Kinski. in his career against Danny Baez. This 
He has two hits in the game tonight, a double in the second, a single in the seventh, and has driven in three runs. On the ground and through the vacated right side. From third comes Lowell. Heading to third is Cora. Fourth RBI of the night for Hensky brings the Red Sox within two. It's now nine to seven. A double, a sin, two singles, and as Don mentioned, four runs batted in tonight for Eric Hensky. Hooks the ball between first and second. So with the four batters by as his face, he's only recorded one out. First RBI game since July 19th of 2005 for Hensky, who's a member of the Blue Jays. First and third with one out in the Boston ninth. They trail by two. Time runs on base. Lugo takes ball one. And nobody up behind Byers. It's his game. Side two and out. Outfield very, very deep for the Orioles all the way around. The potential tying run at first base, and they don't want anything over their head. <laughs> Cora at third, Hinsky at first. One away. There's a strike and it's two and one. Now he's at 94 miles per hour getting the strike. In the blink of an eye, the Red Sox have grabbed a run here in the ninth. On the ground to third base, it kicks out Mora. From third comes Cora. And it's a one run game now. That was hit so hard it could have been a double play ball. Now without question that had double play written all over it. And the number one defensive team in the league the Orioles a critical error by Mora. This is a this is a game ending ground ball to third base. He can't come up with it. The Red Sox get within one. What a crazy night here at Fenway Park. So now the tying run in scoring position and Hinsky at second base. The winning run is at first base and Julio Lugo. Veritek pinch it in the eighth and here he is in the ninth. Side ball one. The first two batters reached in this inning. They have both scored to bring the Red Sox back within a run. At one point tonight, trailing nine to three. Swing and a miss, and it's one and one. I mean, look at the Red Sox pitching at the end of the game. Uh, Giving the chance at this, Del Carmen Papelbon. Shutting down the Orioles for the last three innings. And the defense of Coco Crisp in the top half of this inning. On the ground, right side. Roberts to second for one on the first game ending double play. And the Red Sox leave the tying run in scoring position. They make a valiant effort tonight, scoring twice in the bottom of the ninth, but the Orioles just do hold on. They defeat the Red Sox tonight 9-8 to in the first game of the series. W.B. Mason's extra innings is right around the corner, so stay with us. Darren, I'll be back here at Fenway right after this.
captioning for Red Sox baseball in Nesson is brought to you by Aplac. Ask about it at work. No. No. No.